the male protagonist crossed over to a different world, only to discover that he unexpectedly had 38 mothers, and each mother was kind and amiable. In order to grow up healthy, he had to painstakingly aim for a score of just one on every test, for fear that accidentally surpassing his intellectually disabled older brother would result in being killed by his stepmother. Pei Ling grew up in the honorable and just, revered sect that eradicated evil for the people. He had an outstandingly capable father and 38 mothers. Every day, he also had to take care of his stepmother's maidservant, afraid that she might accidentally reward him excessively, returning to his dilapidated nest. Even worse than an outhouse, the male protagonist smirked. Another day of successful survival. However, these days were about to come to an end. After enduring 18 years and going through countless hardships, the male protagonist finally managed to gather 300 low-grade spirit stones. System, activate, name, paling, race, human, realm, foundation establishment stage, second layer, system status inactive, sufficient spirit stones detected to activate the system. May I ask if the host wishes to activate the system? Without hesitation, the male protagonist selected yes. As the operating interface dissipated, the system suddenly displayed the class Classic Windows 95 window. Pei Ling was instantly astonished by the change in style. So many points that can be criticized. Well, it's better than nothing. Pei Ling frantically searched through the martial arts selection interface, and finally found the only martial art that could be cultivated. The Iron Bone Technique. This was a demonic martial art. Those with weak willpower would perish from the unbearable pain of shattered bones. Looking at the cultivation time listed behind, it started at 10 years. Pei Ling was speechless. After barely surviving for 18 years, did he have to cultivate for several more decades? Suddenly, Pei Ling noticed a one-click cultivation system below. Just by looking at this fancy button, he knew it had extraordinary functions. After clicking it, a mysterious force surged into the protagonist's body, while the system sent a prompt. One-click hosting, intelligent upgrade in progress. Friendly reminder, during cultivation, the host will lose control of their body. Please do not panic. Later, the male protagonist discovered that his body began to cultivate autonomously. As waves of pure spiritual energy flowed into his body, Pei Ling not only felt it, but it also felt amazing. Indeed, this system is perfect for me. It's truly a conscientious system. Suddenly, the system sent a prompt. Detection. Lack of bone tempering pills and cultivation. Please wait. The male protagonist thought to himself. Even the big shots of the Pei clan don't have many bone tempering pills. I haven't even seen one. Where can I find bone tempering pills? Suddenly, the system issued another prompt. Analysis complete. The system will gift 10 bone tempering pills for free. The male protagonist was overjoyed. Is this the beginner's benefit? Suddenly, the protagonist's body stood up on its own, kicking open the door and flying off towards a certain place. The male protagonist was shocked. I've survived for 18 years, but I've never run around the courtyard so brazenly. When he reached his destination, the male protagonist was astonished to find himself at the residence of the sex great demon leader. Pei Ling desperately begged the system not to act rashly. Just take a look and leave. In the next second, he kicked open the front door and dashed straight in. Pei Ling shouted to stop while sparks and lightning trailed behind him, heading straight for the main house. Luckily, the system stopped at the entrance to the main house. Pei Ling breathed a sigh of relief. But in an instant, the system punched through the door, leaving the male protagonist feeling utterly hopeless. After all, this was Jin Jinjian's room. He's the big demon leader who dares to kill even his own father. But the system didn't care about that. It controlled his body, strolled casually to the cabinet, and opened a drawer, where, as expected, there was a bottle of bone-tempering pills. At this moment, the system prompted, 10 bone-tempering pills gifted successfully. The intelligent system will continue your cultivation. Pei Ling was about to pour out the pills and stuff them into his mouth. Who do you think you're fooling by calling this gifting bone-tempering pills? After swallowing the bone-tempering pill, the system nonchalantly sat down and began cultivating on the spot. Pei Ling felt mentally exhausted, but this bone-tempering pill was indeed a good thing. After taking it, his cultivation speed increased by more than 10 times compared to before. As the meridians in his body surged, Pei Ling's cultivation visibly grew at a rapid pace. He broke through to the third layer of the foundation establishment stage, truly worthy of a male protagonist, easily achieving what others couldn't. Then, the system ended its control over Pei Ling's body, expecting a five-star review from the male protagonist. Pei Ling wasn't ungrateful, so he decisively raised his middle finger and gave it a one-star rating. Just as Pei Ling was still immersed in the pleasure of revenge, laughter from a woman suddenly echoed around him. Nervously, Pei Ling turned around to look, and to his surprise, the woman on the screen had come back to life. She even invited Pei Ling to join her in cultivating the Great Tao. 
Seeing the ghostly hand reaching out towards him, Pei Ling broke out in a cold sweat, hastily retreating repeatedly. Luckily, his physical condition had greatly surpassed before after the breakthrough, and with a few swift movements, he flipped over the back wall of the Jin clan's backyard. Just as he was about to lament his near loss of purity, a sinister voice suddenly came from behind. Seventh young master, what are you doing? Pei Ling had just escaped from Jin Jinshan's residence, and now he encountered a servant from the clan. He urged Pei Ling to quickly gather at the main hall. As the family head had an announcement to make, Pei Ling anxiously asked about Jin Jinshan's return to the residence. The servant responded impatiently, he hasn't returned. Don't waste my time or you'll face the family's disciplinary measures. Pei Ling immediately dashed off, thinking to himself. It seems that Jin Jinshan went directly to the main hall as soon as he returned, and he has no idea about me stealing his pills. Moreover, the Pei clan has strict rules and regulations. If someone fails to attend a meeting without reason, experts will be sent to apprehend them. After a moment, Pei Ling arrived at the clan's main hall. Jin Jinshan, a disciple of the Zhongming sect, sat in the main seat, while the clan head sat beside him. Pei Ling cautiously hid among the crowd, observing as all the clan members gathered. Jin Jinshan issued a task. Today, our sect trader Wu Tingxi has fled to Mount Yuan Lao. Everyone, immediately enter the mountain and search. A reward of 50 bone tempering pills will be given to those who find any trace. Pei Ling thought to himself, truly worthy of the Zhongming sect. They offer 50 bone tempering pills right from the start. Even the clan head beside him was astonished by this generous reward. Xin Jinshan's eyes showed a hint of anger. What are you all standing there for? Why aren't you taking action immediately? The clan head hurriedly stood up and explained. Master, please don't misunderstand. We have only heard that Wu Tingxi's cultivation has reached the seventh layer of the foundation establishment stage. While our disciples have weak strength, it may be difficult for them to handle it. The seventh layer of the foundation establishment stage may be insignificant to Jin Jinjian, but for the Pei clan, it's like a towering mountain. The clan head himself has just reached the seventh layer of the foundation establishment stage, while the great demon Jin Jinjian is already at the mid stage of the foundation stage. In other words, the entire Pei clan is easily within Jin Jinjian's grasp. At this moment, Jin Jinjian calmly spoke Wu Tingxi is already heavily injured. Even cultivators traveling on the path could easily capture him. Furthermore, I'm only asking you to find him, not to take action against him. After saying that, he snapped his fingers, and a man with a gloomy face and cold eyes appeared as if by magic. This was Wu Tingxi. If you discover his trace, immediately send a signal. I will personally come and capture him. Upon hearing this, everyone nodded in agreement. Pei Ling felt secretly delighted. Once we leave the city, I'll make my escape directly, fleeing far away. On the other hand, Xin Jinshan returned to his residence but didn't go to his own room. Instead, he went to a more secluded cottage at the back, and on the eaves, there were wind chimes made of skulls hanging. Xin Jinshan glanced at them and felt dizzy. A woman inside the house spoke coldly. Did you find the person? Xin Jinshan replied. Wu Tingxi has escaped to Mount Yuanlao with the secret manual. I have informed the Pei clan. Useless. He was interrupted before he could finish. The person inside the house reprimanded coldly. If you can't find the Six Desires manual within three days, I will extract your soul to refine my artifact. The protagonist followed the fellow disciples and arrived at the foot of Mount Yuan Lao. Because the protagonist had just stolen the pills from Jin Jin Chan, the great demon, he planned to escape before the demon discovered it. Pei Ling had already prepared an escape plan in advance. First, he would go to the nearest neighboring city, disguise himself, and blend in with a traveling caravan. Then, he thought, he would have the freedom to roam the vast sea and sky, with no limitations. While the protagonist was focused on running away, Pei Ling suddenly felt weak in the legs, and his body turned cold. This was something that had never happened to him since he embarked on the path of cultivation. Then, he fell to the ground with a thump, thinking to himself, it must be the eerie screen's doing. But why didn't anything happen when I was in Jin Jinshan's room before? Could it be because, at that time, the system was controlling my body, feeling his thoughts becoming increasingly dull? Pei Ling didn't have time to dwell on it and quickly summon the system. I want to cultivate. The intelligent cultivation system is at your service. After the system took control of his body, Pei Ling instantly became strong-willed. With a roar, the female ghost who had been arrogant earlier, was punched apart by Pei Ling. Indeed, with the system by my side, those female ghosts dare not lay a hand on me. Suddenly, a notification sound from the system echoed in his ears, detecting severe depletion of the host's vitality. Continuing cultivation will result in irreversible damage. 
to assist the host in regulating vitality. The system will grant three vitality pills free of charge. Pei Ling was once again filled with fear and terror. Another batch of pills was being offered. The protagonist shouted not to take them, but his body obediently turned backward and sprinted towards Mount Yuan Lao, where he had just escaped from. Meanwhile, in a certain underground chamber in Mount Yuan Lao, an old man with a withered face lamented his current miserable situation as he took out the last bottle of vitality pills from his pocket. While preparing to swallow them, Pei Ling appeared beside the man, swiftly snatching the jade bottle from the old man's hand and immediately pouring out three vitality pills. He swallowed them all in one gulp and casually tossed the bottle into a corner. Simultaneously, the system sent a prompt. Vitality pill distribution completed. The system will continue your cultivation. Then, Pei Ling directly sat down cross-legged and began cultivation right on the spot. At Foundation Establishment Stage 3, furious about his vitality pills being stolen, and witnessing someone cultivating in front of him, broke through his rationality in an instant, filled with anger. I'll kill you. The old man's rage surged. He picked up the discarded jade bottle, swallowed the remaining vitality pills in one go, and lifted the jade bottle to strike the protagonist's head, detecting an external attack. The cultivation session ended at this point. If satisfied, please give a 5-star rating. Satisfied? You damned ghost! Watching the enraged old man, Pei Ling was about to beg for mercy, but he was directly sent flying 20 meters away by a strike of the five poison fingers. As the dust settled, Pei Ling sat paralyzed on the ground, unable to move, staring at the five bloody holes in his arm. Pei Ling's mind raced. The old man is too strong. If this continues, I will undoubtedly die. I must find a way to stall him. Seeing Pei Ling blocking his five poison fingers with his left arm, the old man's expression changed. He silently activated his eye technique and discovered that Pei Ling had actually cultivated an exceptional iron body, speculating that the protagonist must have had some fortuitous encounter. He questioned Pei Ling, how did you cultivate such an exceptional iron body? Looking at the sinister old man, Pei Ling quickly apologized, regretting his decision to snatch the vitality pills, but he genuinely had no idea about the exceptional iron body. Thinking of fooling this old man for now, he didn't expect the old man's next words to instantly intensify the situation. You came into the mountains for me, didn't you? Pei Ling was frightened and quickly waved his hands. If he admitted it, he would be killed on the spot. So he narrated the incident of stealing the bone-tempering pills in detail. The old man listened and was also shocked. He didn't expect this kid to be so audacious, to dare steal from Jinjin John. Are young people these days so reckless? Pei Ling shyly touched his head and said, Youthful recklessness, you know, who hasn't made mistakes before? And Jinjin John hasn't gone back yet, because he hasn't discovered that I destroyed his ancestral home. Seeing that the old man was convinced by his rhetoric, Pei Ling quickly put on a flattering expression. We have a common enemy. We are destined to be a perfect match. The old man disdainfully shook off Pei Ling's hand. If that's the case, why did you snatch my vitality pills? Pei Ling quickly explained. I had no choice. Do you know that Jinjin Zhan has a screen embroidered with a beautiful woman? The old man's eyes widened. His face changed drastically. You brat! Have you seen the painting of the seductive ghost? You are still alive. Seeing the old man's reaction, Pei Ling was instantly filled with fear. He had indeed taken a good look at that thing. He then explained that he had been tormented by the seductive ghosts along the way, and in desperation, he had to snatch the fellow cultivator's vitality pills to save his life. The old man muttered to himself, Indeed, with your strength, you wouldn't stand a chance against the devouring power of the painting of the seductive ghost. His expression then changed, and he smirked sinisterly, since that's the case. How about we make a deal? He took out his treasured cultivation manual, the Six Desires Scripture, from his pocket, and intended to make a trade with the protagonist. As long as Pei Ling could help him escape from Mount Yuan Lao, he would share this cultivation method with him. Pei Ling persistently looked at him. Is that it? It seems quite ordinary. Wu Tingxi immediately became furious. What do you know, you little brat? This is the cultivation method that Jin Jin Shan desires but can't obtain. They have done whatever it takes to obtain this cultivation method, cruelly harming my sect. If I hadn't noticed something was amiss in advance, I would have been killed by Jin Jin Shan long ago. The old man held the jade scroll with a sense of grievance. Just then, the system suddenly prompted. Unknown external cultivation method detected. System is recording. Pei Ling was taken aback. He didn't expect the system to have such a useful function. Although the recording speed was a bit slow, Pei Ling could only desperately stall for time. Seeing Pei Ling's anxious expression, Wu Tingxi slapped the protagonist's head. That's the effect I wanted. Then, he tucked the jade scroll back into his pocket, unaware that the cultivation method had already been fully recorded. Recording complete. Please name the cultivation method. Host. At a time like this, 
Who had the time to think of a name? Let's call it the nameless cultivation method. Now the important thing is to escape from here first. Then, Pei Ling pretended to support the old man and suddenly turned around, exclaiming in shock, Jin Jin Shan, why are you here? Wu Tingxi was instantly scared and wet his pants. Pei Ling took this opportunity to quickly slip away. By the time Wu Tingxi reacted, there was no one around him anymore. Wu Tingxi became furious. How dare that kid deceive me? He casually shot a beam of light towards Pei Ling. Pei Ling was frightened and ran around aimlessly, ending up in a dead end. Seeing Wu Tingxi closing in on him, Pei Ling calculated in his heart. His body had already recovered, and Wu Tingxi's current strength was at most 30 to 40 percent of his usual state. He could fight back. Then, with an angry shout, Pei Ling threw Wu Tingxi over his shoulder with a shoulder throw. Seeing Wu Tingxi barely breathing, Pei Ling quickly finished him off and casually took the jade scroll and pills, just as he was about to leave and continue his escape. The familiar feeling of weakness struck again. Recalling Wu Tingxi's curse before he died, Pei Ling reluctantly had to return to the Pei residence once again, planning to trade the jade scroll with Jin Jinshan to break the ghost poison. To his surprise, Jin Jinshan was not in the mansion, but he was informed that there was an even more powerful figure in the mansion. Jin Jinshan was like an ant in her presence. She was Li Lai Yu, the next saintess of the Chongming sect. Since childhood, Pei Ling had been arranged to marry the saintess, but at the age of 18, she had already reached the Golden Core Realm's great perfection, while the protagonist was not even at the fourth layer of the Foundation Establishment stage. With just a glance, the woman pressed Pei Ling down to the ground with her oppressive aura, in order to save his life. Pei Ling hurriedly confessed to the saintess, hoping that she could help him remove the ghost poison. The saintess inquired about Wu Tingxi's whereabouts. Pei Ling replied, Wu Tingxi is already dead. As for the jade scroll on his body, he had hidden it in a certain place. He only hoped that the saintess could save his life. Seeing Pei Ling severely injured by the five poison palm, the saintess knew that Pei Ling's words were not false. She casually threw a bottle of pill, telling Pei Ling that as long as he took it and meditated, he could dissolve the chilling power of the five poison finger. As for the curse of the Rakshasa ghost disciple on Pei Ling's body, once he retrieved the jade scroll, Jin Jinshan would be able to remove it. Then, she turned her body around, instantly disappearing from sight. Pei Ling had just freed himself from Li Liyue's oppression, but who would have expected the curse on his body to act up again? And now he had to endure it until Li Liyue returned, and the only means he had was to rely on the system for cultivation. Looking at the familiar skill selection interface, recalling the experiences of cultivating the bone forging art twice before, Pei Ling decisively chose the nameless art. One click automated intelligent cultivation, now starting automated cultivation. The familiar sound of the system echoed in his ears. Pei Ling once again felt the utmost comfort. On the other side, Li Lai Yu successfully obtained the secret manual, but before she had a chance to examine it, a sudden attack emerged from the manual. Fortunately, her profound cultivation allowed her to dodge this deadly strike. Then, the manual floated in the air, gradually condensing into the form of an old man. It turned out to be Luo Xiao, an elder from the outer sect of the Chongming sect. Li Lai Yu did not expect that he still had a remnant soul hidden in the manual. Seeing Luo Xiao launching an attack towards her, Li Lai Yu remained calm, gathering her spiritual energy and summoning a ferocious giant serpent. This was the soul binding lock that specialized in restraining residual spirits. The old man was tightly entangled by the giant serpent and couldn't break free. Seeing no chance of turning the tables, Luo Xiao made up his mind to die together with the woman. Immediately, his entire soul rapidly expanded. Li Lai Yu didn't expect Luo Xiao to be so decisive, willing to self-detonate his soul to destroy the manual. Then, she leaped high, disregarding everything, and rushed towards Luo Xiao, and successfully seized the manual by enduring the self-detonation of a Golden Core Realm cultivator. But she herself also suffered serious injuries, and needed to quickly return to the residence for proper recuperation. However, what she didn't know was, Pei Ling's system was about to cause trouble again. At the same time, Pei Ling, who was cultivating the nameless art, was secretly delighted. Never did he expect that cultivating this technique would be so captivating. Suddenly, the system prompted that the nameless art was a dual cultivation technique, and required a partner to continue cultivation. Detecting that the host lacked a Taoist companion, the system would provide a free Taoist companion. Pei Ling was instantly speechless. Here we go again? Then the system took control of Pei Ling's body and started running wildly. Pei Ling's mentality instantly exploded. Damn system, you won't stop until you drive me crazy. Ha, throughout the Pei residence, anyone who could be a Taoist companion, was either a blood-related sister or aunt. The system quickly arrived at its destination. Surprisingly, it was the Saintess's Fuyun courtyard. Pei Ling still clung to a glimmer of hope. System, 
Did we make a mistake? Isn't Li Lai Yu still outside the city? But in the next second, the system decisively pushed open the door and headed straight into the courtyard. Pei Ling was completely panicked. System, you're amazing. Let's face our doom together, shall we? Li Lai Yu, who was in the midst of healing her injuries, noticed the figure outside the room. But she didn't think much of it, and assumed it was someone coming to help her remove the Rakshasa Yen Ghost Disciple's curse. She casually said, I will attend to you later. But unexpectedly, the door was kicked open with a loud bang. At the same time, the system struck a pose. Thinking it looked handsome, Li Lai Yu was furious. Her fierce attack instantly struck towards Pei Ling. Simultaneously, Pei Ling also threw out a jade pill that he obtained from Wu Tingxi, a jade green pill. The pill exploded in midair, enveloping the entire room in thick smoke. After the dust settled, Li Lai Yu collapsed to the ground, feeling weak all over. Seven desolate soul suppressing powder. Never did Wu Tingxi expect his trump card to end up in Pei Ling's hands. Soon after, she lost consciousness due to exhaustion. Pei Ling also didn't expect Li Lai Yu to collapse like this. Could it be that the system is too powerful? Or does she have injuries? The system then gently carried the woman and placed her on the bed. Pei Ling thought to himself, Thank goodness, you dog of a system, have some conscience. But this woman is off limits. It's better for us to leave first. But in the next moment, the system reached out towards the saintess, unveiling the veil that covered her face. So beautiful, seeing the woman's stunning appearance. Pei Ling was instantly dumbfounded. Taoist companion acquisition complete. Now, commence formal cultivation. At this moment, Pei Ling's inner world was in turmoil. Reason and desire were in constant conflict. But when the system tore off the woman's clothes, all reason was instantly obliterated. I didn't want this either. But which man can resist? Pei Ling pressed down on the woman like a hungry tiger pouncing on its prey. Looking at the blushing Li Lai Yu beneath him, Pei Ling discovered that a strange force was continuously flowing into his limbs and body. Not only did his injuries from the fight with Wu Tingxi heal rapidly, but even the recently achieved breakthrough in the foundation establishment stage was rapidly advancing. Seeing the slightly furrowed brows of the saintess beneath him, Pei Ling's body was drenched in cold sweat. He had no idea how the woman would torment and abuse him once she woke up. My identity is definitely not going to be preserved. Just at this moment, Xin Jinchan had just returned to the Pei residence, and learned from the Pei family head that Wu Tingxi was dead, and that the items had been personally retrieved by Li Lai Yu. Xin Jinchan was secretly delighted. Perhaps senior sister will consider my contributions. You will reward me as well. Little did he know that his beautiful senior sister was being bullied by this kid. But in the next moment, his expression turned ugly, because the bone-tempering pill placed in the cabinet was missing. He asked behind him, who broke in while I was away? Immediately, a ghost drifted out from the folding screen behind him, gradually transforming into the shape of a woman, and whispered softly in his ear, Pei Ling, and this person is currently at your senior sister's residence, the Fuyun Courtyard. Meanwhile, inside the Fuyun Courtyard, the woman lying on the bed was slowly regaining consciousness. She could feel a pure energy, continuously flowing into her body, and her injuries were rapidly healing. This warm and comfortable feeling, made her somewhat unable to resist. The woman slowly opened her eyes, and what met her gaze was a stranger. She instantly understood what had happened, raised her right arm to strike the shameless scoundrel, but unexpectedly, her wrist was grabbed. Not only was she pressed down again, but he also effortlessly flipped her over. At the same time, the system continued to control Pei Ling's body, accelerating his cultivation. Feeling the rapid growth of his cultivation and the continuous influx of pure energy, the woman's face was filled with shame. While the two were immersed in their cultivation, Jin Jinchan had already arrived at the entrance of the Fuyun courtyard. Seeing the broken gate, Jin Jinchan was shocked. Who dares to trespass into the Fuyun courtyard? Looking at the woman beneath him, filled with killing intent, Pei Ling felt a mix of emotions. It feels great in the moment, but you'll regret it later. But the system doesn't care about these things. After the final convergence of Yin and Yang, Pei Ling finally gained control of his body from the system. At the same time, the system sent a prompt. One-click automation. Ascend without worries. Please give a 5-star rating if you're satisfied. Exhausted, Pei Ling collapsed on top of the woman. He took a deep breath and happened to meet Li Liyue's gaze, filled with a desire to tear him to pieces. No time to explain, let's escape quickly. However, at this moment, footsteps could be heard from outside. It was Jin Jinchan's voice. Who dares to trespass into the Fuyun courtyard? Damn it, why is Jin Jinchan here? Pei Ling in the room was suffocating. Jin Jinchan outside the room was also greatly shocked. He didn't expect senior sister's door to be broken as well. Could it still be that kid, Pei Ling? Fine, you stole my bone-tempering pill. 
but I didn't expect you would dare to touch senior sister's belongings. Jin Jinjian was planning to take care of Pei Ling on behalf of the Pei family. Suddenly, a series of bells rang from the eaves. Instantly, a mouthful of blood sprayed out from Jin Jinjian's mouth. He immediately knelt on the ground, continuously kowtowing and begging senior sister for forgiveness. Then a familiar icy voice came from inside the room, mixed with an anger rarely seen before. Jin Jinjian didn't dare to delay for a moment and quickly turned around to leave. Pei Ling turned around and looked at the woman, his expression full of embarrassment. I'm sorry, I just… Before Pei Ling could finish speaking, the woman walked straight past him, and went inside the folding screen, starting to clean herself with water. Seeing this, Pei Ling quickly put on his clothes, preparing to run away. However, the system popped up with another prompt. Please give a 5-star rating if you're satisfied. Without any surprise, Pei Ling raised his middle finger and gave it a 1-star rating. If it weren't for the fact that I can't uninstall the system, I would kick you out in a minute. I'm sorry. The intelligent cultivation system failed to provide the host with a satisfactory cultivation experience. As compensation, the system will give a free nourishing essence pill. Before Pei Ling could react, the system quickly took control of his body and flipped out a purse from the torn clothes of Li Lai you on the bed. Open it and take out a nourishing essence pill. At the same time, the system prompts that the nourishing essence pill has been given, wishing you a smooth cultivation journey. Pei Ling was dumbfounded. After sleeping with the holy maiden, do I get rewarded for stealing her things again? What kind of scumbag system would do such a thing? Pei Ling quickly picked up the nourishing essence pill, intending to return it. Suddenly, he felt a chill behind him. The person approaching was Li Lai Yu herself. With cold and indifferent eyes, she asked, What are you doing? This man is shameless. Not only did he force himself on the holy maiden of the demon sect, but he also stole her elixirs from her personal clothing. However, he didn't expect the woman to come back just after taking a bath and catch him red-handed, wearing a pink helmet on his head while tampering with her clothes. Now, it's completely impossible to explain. Looking at the furious holy maiden, Pei Ling felt bitter in her heart. Dog system, in my next life. I will definitely give you 10,000 negative reviews. In the next moment, a mushroom cloud rose from the Fuyun Academy, shocking Jin Jin Chan, who was not far away. But luckily, the Holy Maiden didn't harm her future husband. The attack narrowly missed Pei Ling as it passed by him. Pei Ling couldn't understand why the Holy Maiden showed mercy to him. Little did he know that Li Lai Yu had just lifted the curse from him. At this moment, Jin Jin Chan, who heard the commotion, and Pei Hong Yan arrived here. Pei Hong Yan, standing aside, was filled with astonishment. Pei Ling, what are you doing here? He asked. Upon hearing Pei Ling's name, Jin Jinshan's face immediately darkened. Then he went to complain to Li Lai Yu. Sister, this person is deceitful. Please punish him severely. But before he could finish his sentence, the woman slapped him away. Unable to get up from the ground, Li Lai Yu didn't offer any explanation. She took out a small ink jade boat from her bosom, formed a hand seal, and the boat stretched out in the wind. In an instant, it transformed into a three-story tall floating ship in midair. The woman stepped onto the ship and turned around to look at the others, saying lightly, return to the sect. Pei Ling felt secretly delighted that they were finally leaving. He had successfully survived this ordeal. However, after waiting for a while, the ship remained motionless. Pei Ling turned around and found Li Lia Yue's eyes fixed firmly on him. Pei Ling had a bad premonition and was about to slip away quietly when Jin Jin Shan directly called him out, saying, what are you standing there for? Hurry up and get on board. Reluctantly, Pei Ling had no choice but to begrudgingly step onto the ship. Finally, the ship started and turned into a streak of light, flying towards the Zhongming sect. However, in this world, Pei Ling, experiencing flight for the first time, had no mood to appreciate the scenery around him. He sat crouched on the deck, focusing on appearing more inconspicuous. Inside the cabin, two fairies were quietly observing Pei Ling. They couldn't understand why their master would personally break the restriction of the Luo Sha Yan Gui painting for him. However, the climax was about to begin. It turned out that Jin Jin Chan had brought Pei Hong Yin to cause trouble. Jin Jin Chan's eyebrows flashed with a touch of killing intent as he sternly shouted. Who gave you the courage to steal my tempering bone pill? A ferocious light flickered in Jin Jin Chan's eyes. He was about to make a move when he suddenly realized that the traces of the Luo Shaiyan Gui painting on Pei Ling had disappeared. His thoughts shifted, and he suddenly realized, could it be that senior sister personally removed it? It seemed that senior sister valued this kid quite a bit. Thankfully, he had been clever enough not to act recklessly. Seeing that Jin Jin Chan had no intention of making a move, Pei Ling quietly breathed a sigh of relief. 
However, Pei Hongyan on the side exclaimed, You're already at the fourth level of the foundation establishment realm. Just a few days ago, you were only at the second level of the foundation establishment realm. Jin Jinchan, upon hearing this exclamation, also realized the situation. The tempering bone pill can only be taken once. So could this kid have cultivated ten times in just one day? Perhaps that's why senior sister valued him. He then took out a large cleaver. Pei Ling was immediately terrified. Is he going to chop me? Pei Hongyan, seeing the cleaver, also exclaimed, It's the life-loathing blade. What does senior brother want to do? Unexpectedly, Jin Jinshan calmly said, Considering that you two contributed to capturing Wu Tingxi, you didn't get a share of the 50 tempering bone pills earlier. The sect has always been fair in rewards and punishments. I will give you both a chance. He slowly reversed the handle of the cleaver and held the blade with just two fingers, saying in a measured tone, I will only use 20% of my strength. Whoever can pull the blade from my fingertips will own it. Pei Hongyan was overjoyed and eagerly stepped forward without hesitation. He tightly gripped the handle of the cleaver, using all his strength but he couldn't even budge the blade. Instead, he was thrown to the ground by the blade's malevolent energy. A mocking smile appeared on Jin Jinshan's lips as he handed the blade to Pei Ling. It's your turn now. However, Pei Ling quickly waved her hands, thinking that Jin Jinshan couldn't possibly be so kind-hearted. With his weak strength, it would be better to decline. But Jin Jinshan's face darkened. It seems you look down on this life-loathing blade. Then, as the situation became increasingly critical, two women dressed in translucent palace attire, who had been secretly observing, floated out. They were senior sisters' ghostly maidservants. Jin Jinshan's pupils contracted, instinctively revealing a hint of fear. He quickly and respectfully asked, Jiao and I and Wu Lu have come together. Does senior sister have any instructions? However, Wu Lu went straight to Pei Ling's side and lightly flicked his chin with her finger. Quite handsome, aren't you? But in the next moment, her expression changed, and she coldly said, Hurry up and pull out the blade. If you disturb the master, I'll skin you alive. Pei Ling had no choice but to step forward and pull out the blade. Jin Jinshan, with a smug look on his face, thought, just a measly fourth level of the foundation establishment realm. How could you possibly pull out this blade? However, his expression drastically changed the next second because, as Pei Ling exerted force, the life-loathing blade between his two fingers was slowly pulled out. Seeing that Pei Ling was about to pull out the life-loathing blade, Jin Jinshan, who had agreed to only use the strength of the second level, secretly increased it to the fifth level. Facing Jin Jinshan's fifth level strength, Pei Ling predictably lost the battle. Looking at the exhausted Pei Ling, Jin Jinshan was about to show off, but he was interrupted by the ghostly maidservant. Master already has Pei Hongyan, a useless person, on the Xian Bone Linging boat. We can't have another one. The lampshade in the master's room is worn out, so let's skin you to make a new one. Pei Ling had a speechless expression and thought, holy shit, does your master know how wicked you are? Your master didn't even touch me, and I was planning to make a desperate fight. At that moment, Wu Lu suddenly spoke softly, sister, don't be like this. After all, young master Pei has been in remote areas before, and his vision and strength can't be compared to the disciples of the holy sect. In my opinion, it's better for Jin Jinshan to restrain himself a bit and test him with percent 15 of his cultivation. Jiao and I glanced at her and saw Wu Lu sweetly smiling at her. With a thought in mind, she said, According to you, Pei Ling quickly thanked Wu Lu and she swiftly floated in front of Pei Ling, showing a friendly smile. You have to work hard or else you'll only be able to be a lampshade for Jiao and I, right? Jin Jinchan looked at the two of them singing in harmony and thought, could this be senior sister's intention? It seems like I won't be able to hold on to this blade. He could only pretend to be indifferent and once again handed the blade to Pei Ling. As Pei Ling exerted force, the treasured blade was instantly pulled out. Jin Jinchan endured the tears of grievance, encouraging Pei Ling to use the treasured blade well in the future and not bring dishonor to its name. Pei Ling quickly expressed his gratitude and Wu Lu praised Pei Ling as well. Then, she led Pei Ling to the cabin to rest. Just as they entered the interior of the cabin, Pei Ling felt a chill and coldness, and there were occasional thumping sounds of doors banging around them, truly befitting of a demonic sect. It was indeed eerie. Suddenly, a pair of crimson eyes emerged from a room behind them, accompanied by a wave of yin energy rushing towards Pei Ling. At a critical moment, it was Wu Lu who scolded lightly, causing the yin energy to slowly recede. Pei Ling expressed his thanks once again, but Wu Lu seemed casual and, in the midst of conversation, they arrived at Pei Ling's room. However, Wu Lu didn't show any intention of leaving, instead, she turned and asked, Child Pei, may I ask you a question? Pei Ling didn't dare to refuse and replied, Please go ahead, Mississippi. 
Just as the words fell, Wu Lu suddenly moved and appeared in front of Pei Ling, so close that she was practically touching the tip of his nose. Her pink eyes stared directly at Pei Ling, and her ice-cold fingertips gently caressed his neck, exhaling a frosty breath. Child Pei, why do you have the scent of my master on you? Pei Ling was greatly shocked, and cold sweat almost instantly surged out. He thought, could she know what I did to his master? Wu Lu slightly tilted her head her cold little hand intimately caressing his cheek, and softly said, My master's soul-subduing Bell's heart devil melody is difficult to resist, even for Xin Jin Zhan, yet you can act as if nothing happened towards my master. I'm really curious, what extraordinary qualities does child Pei possess? Hearing this, Pei Ling was both shocked and embarrassed. It wasn't just that she knew, it was obvious she witnessed the whole thing, and the heart devil Bell and all that. It was the system that took care of it for me, stammering, Pei Ling said. Well, maybe it's because of my special constitution. Seeing Wu Lu's disbelief, Pei Ling quickly explained, when we captured Wu Tingxi earlier, he claimed to have an exceptional iron body. So, I suppose it's because of my special constitution. Wu Lu seemed to understand something after listening. He had an exceptionally stable soul and was skilled in refining his body. Such a powerful and unknown constitution was indeed worth bringing back to the holy sect for further study. By then, the master would extract your soul for a little experiment, who knows what interesting things might be discovered. Pei Ling instantly broke into a cold sweat. This is bad, so that's why they insisted on bringing me on this wretched ship. They actually see me as a guinea pig. And then, Wu Lu leaned close to Pei Ling's ear again and said, Child Pei, you must be careful. My master's methods of torture can make you unable to resist. After saying that, she swiftly performed a knife hand strike, knocking Pei Ling unconscious. In the moment before Pei Ling lost consciousness, he vaguely saw a sinister smile from Wu Lu and the graceful figure of Li Lai Yu approaching. The following scenes are probably not something everyone would like to see, so I'll skip them for you. The Xian Bone Ling Yin boat continued tirelessly towards the heavy mist sect. Inside the room, Pei Ling, for some unknown reason, was sweating profusely. Outside, two disciples were complaining about why the Xian Bone Ling Yin boat was moving so slowly. It had been half a month, and they still hadn't reached the holy sect. Little did they know that the owner of the boat was engaged in a century-long battle with Pei Ling. Meanwhile, there was no clock in the room, and without realizing it, half a month had passed. On Jin Jinchan's side, he intended to have Pei Hongyan take Pei Ling to the outer sect. Pei Hongyan couldn't understand, asking what qualifications that kid had to enter the outer sect. Jin Jinchan didn't explain and simply ordered Pei Hongyan to leave. It was Li Liyue's command, and he didn't dare to disobey. Half a month quickly passed, and one day, Pei Ling slowly woke up from the bed, realizing that his inner energy seemed to have increased a lot. However, his waist was a bit sore. At that moment, Pei Hongyan's shout came from the door. Pei Ling walked over slowly and opened the door, only to see his face pale and emaciated, as if he hadn't had a moment of rest in the past half a month. Pei Hongyan informed him that the flying ship was about to arrive at the Heavy Mist sect and told him to pack up quickly. Pei Ling was shocked and panicked. He quickly closed the door, realizing that he had entered this sinister sect and didn't know if he could survive by hiding. He had to find a way to escape. Just then, a purple mist suddenly appeared in the room, and Li Lai Yu once again appeared in front of Pei Ling. Before Pei Ling could react, a secret manual flew towards him, hitting him directly on the forehead. Li Lai Yu didn't waste any words and left only one sentence. Master it within 10 days, or die. Then she disappeared. Pei Ling picked up the secret manual and saw the words Bloodthirsty Blade Technique written in Cloud Seal script on the cover. Just as she flipped open the pages, the system prompted a notification, detecting the inclusion of an unfamiliar external knife technique. Being collected, Pei Ling smirked with pride, thinking, I have cheats. What do I have to fear? This is the first time I find this dog of a system so pleasing. The scene shifted, and after half a month, the flying ship finally arrived at the Heavy Mist sect. Following Pei Hongyan, Pei Ling went up to the deck and couldn't help but exclaim, This is much more bustling than Luchuan City. Pei Hongyan introduced, This is the Dust Cutting Terrace. New disciples will enter the sect from here, bidding farewell to the mortal world and entering the realm of immortals. Then, he was going to take Pei Ling to complete the procedures for joining the outer sect. Pei Ling thought, I wonder what kind of formidable characters are in the outer sect. Maybe I should just be a menial disciple. Just as he was about to decline, Pei Hongyan grabbed his wrist and said, Don't waste time. This is Senior Zhang's order. Or do you want to defy Xin Jinchan's will? Pei Ling quickly responded, I dare not. Soon, the two arrived at the inheritance hall. Upon entering, they saw a shabby-looking old man lying sideways on a couch, holding a wine jar. The old man complained, can't even have a drink in peace. 
Suddenly, countless soul lamps floated in the entire hall. In that moment of Pei Ling's confusion, the old man pointed his two fingers at the male protagonist in midair. Pei Ling's body abruptly stiffened, unable to move, as a strand of essence blood slowly floated out from her forehead. With a swoosh, it merged into one of the soul lamps. The old man calmly said, with this soul lamp ignited, you are now a member of the Heavy Mist sect. Take the rules and leave quickly. The two didn't dare to delay, so they took the rules and ran off in a hurry. Looking at the thick rules in his hands, Pei Ling was overjoyed. He thought, I'm not afraid of having many rules, I'm only afraid of having no rules. As long as I abide by the rules, I can survive even in adversity. Pei Ling, lost in her fantasy, couldn't help but laugh foolishly. Pei Hongyan said, once you finish reading the rules, you'll understand. The biggest rule of the Heavy Mist sect is that there are no rules. The male protagonist, who had just arrived at the Heavy Mist sect, was trembling in fear at the sight of two fierce and evil-looking men. Fortunately, Pei Hongyan arrived just in time and casually threw a nameplate and a storage bag to Pei Ling looking at the nameplate made of a piece of bone. Pei Ling felt nauseated. It truly lived up to being a sect from the underworld. Pei Hongyan reminded him, this nameplate is the most important thing you have. It can save your life in critical moments. He then took out a small paper boat from his pocket, which quickly grew larger when thrown into the sea of clouds. He jumped onto the paper boat, intending to take Pei Ling to his residence. However, he wondered if the shaky paper boat was reliable. Fortunately, once the paper boat took off, it was quite stable. While Pei Ling was fantasizing about what the sea of clouds below looked like, a green feather floated in front of him, followed by the appearance of a gigantic green bird. Before Pei Ling could react, the bird swiped its claw and overturned the paper boat. Pei Ling was shocked and frightened, wondering how there could be demonic beasts in the holy sect. Just as he was about to draw his sword to vanquish the beast, Pei Hongyan stopped him, saying that using a knife would damage his paper boat. While the two hesitated, the paper boat collided with a nearby mountain, and both of them fell from the clouds. Fortunately, they were both cultivators and didn't suffer severe injuries. Pei Hongyan, who was hanging from a tree, was still lamenting over his paper boat. Suddenly, there was an exclamation from nearby, Senior Sister Son, I found it. Now let's see where you can run. Pei Ling watched as the two approaching figures were filled with aggression. He thought to herself that the strange bird must have been released by them. Just as he was about to step forward to confront them, he realized that Pei Hongyan had already gone ahead and transformed into a sycophant. He shamelessly flattered a woman in green clothing, licking her frantically. However, in the next second, the woman slapped him away. Pei Ling couldn't believe that Pei Hongyan wasn't even the slightest bit angry. Instead, he knelt before the woman, continuously apologizing. Pei Ling had an expression of speechlessness. He never expected Pei Hongyan to be such a bootlicker. The woman in green was about to continue reprimanding him. Pei Ling unable to bear watching any longer, stepped forward and grabbed the woman's wrist. The woman, who was at the fourth layer of the foundation establishment realm just like Pei Ling, found herself unable to break free. Immediately, her expression changed to one of grievance, and she said, Pei Hongyan, is this how you watch your junior fellow disciple bullying me? Upon hearing these words, Pei Hongyan immediately stood up. He admonished his junior fellow disciple and told him to release Yin Lan, addressing Pei Ling as junior fellow disciple. Pei Ling had no choice but to step aside, watching his senior fellow disciple once again act like a sycophant. Afterwards, Pei Hongyan instructed Pei Ling to go to the administrative hall and find a place to stay on her own, while he followed Sunny Nian. As Pei Ling watched Pei Hongyan leave, he couldn't help but twitch his lips a couple of times. He was truly a devoted bootlicker. There was no hope for him. Pei Ling bid farewell to his bootlicker senior fellow disciple and arrived at the administrative hall alone, intending to choose his own residence. Facing the senior fellow disciple in charge of the property, Pei Ling had a face full of speechlessness. He never expected that after transmigrating, he would still have to pick a room. Before the senior fellow disciple could finish speaking, he interrupted with a beaming smile, saying, how about you lend me some spirit stones, senior fellow disciple? I promise. Pei Ling's words were cut off coldly by the senior fellow disciple, who said, then go over there. From now on, head west for 100 miles. Meanwhile, inside the Xian Boning spirit boat, Jin Jinshan was reporting Pei Ling's situation to Li Laiyu. Unaware of the situation, Jin Jinshan wanted to find out why Pei Ling was being given such attention. Li Laiyu calmly set down the teacup in her hand and turned to Jin Jinshan, saying, I heard that you want to go mining in the Yinlu mountain range. Seeing the unfavorable situation, 
Jin Jinshan immediately apologized and hastily left the room. After closing the door, Jin Jinshan secretly pondered, sister values that kid so much and has me look after him in my name. Could she be testing him? Inside the room, after Jin Jinshan left, Li Lai Yu summoned a ghostly maid and instructed her, saying, Wu Lu, keep an eye on Pei Ling. After a long journey, Pei Ling finally found his residence. To him surprise, his living quarters were so luxurious that tears filled his eyes. He realized that he had misunderstood the senior fellow disciple in charge of the property. Stepping into the courtyard, Pei Ling noticed that three of the room doors were sealed with talismans, indicating that three senior fellow disciples had already moved in, though they seemed to be absent. With nothing else to do, Pei Ling took out the sex rules and the life-loathing blade, intending to study the sex rules carefully. It was the lifeline for him survival in the future. The Chong Ming sect was established tens of thousands of years ago and was one of the top major sects in the domain. Each peak in the various regions was managed by the local administrative hall, while the treasury hall sold cultivation techniques, and the treasure hall sold magical artifacts. In addition, there was also the enforcer hall responsible for monitoring and punishing disciples. After getting a general understanding, Pei Ling quickly examined the door rules to prepare herself in advance. However, what Pei Ling didn't expect was that the summary of the entire door rules was simply, compensate with money. If disciples fought privately, they would be fined spirit stones. Initiating an attack would result in a spirit stone penalty, and causing disability would also be settled with spirit stones. Even killing for treasure could be resolved with spirit stones. In short, the bottom line was that as long as you had money, you could do whatever you wanted in the Chong Ming sect. I thought that as long as I familiarized myself with the door rules and followed them, relying on my own survival skills, I would be able to achieve something. Little did I know that the unexpected would come so quickly. Suddenly, there was a commotion outside the house, and the next moment, the front door was kicked open, and three unfamiliar men entered. One of them frowned slightly and asked, Who are you? Pei Ling quickly and obediently introduced herself, saying, Senior brothers, my name is Pei Ling. I am a newly admitted outer disciple at the Foundation Establishment Realm, fourth level. Looking at this sudden junior fellow disciple, the three men exchanged glances and communicated silently. Now is not the time for new disciples to enter. This person has a special identity. Let's not act rashly. Afterwards, one of them introduced himself, saying, I'm Li Si, at the Foundation Establishment Realm, fourth level. These two are Zhou Yi and Miao Chen, at the Foundation Establishment Realm, fourth and fifth levels, respectively. Meeting each other is fate. We'll take care of you from now on. Junior fellow disciple, Pei Ling quickly expressed his gratitude and thought to himself, I didn't expect there to be such good people in this gloomy sect. Then the three inquired about how Pei Ling entered the outer section. Seeing their relatively calm attitude, Pei Ling felt a bit relieved and explained that it was arranged by the inner sex vein master, senior brother Jin Jin Zhan. However, Miao Chen blurted out, that waste, Jin Jin Zhan, only managed to secure the position of inner sex vein master because of his distant relation to Li Lai Yu. Pei Ling was speechless. He hadn't expected Jin Jin Zhan's reputation to be so poor. Li Si continued, Junior fellow, don't take offense. Miao Chen has some conflicts with Jin Jin Zhan. Li Si continued to inquire about the relationship between Pei Ling and Li Lai Yu. Pei Ling dared not borrow Li Lai Yu's name and quickly explained, Senior brother, you've misunderstood. I was just fortunate to receive Jin Jin Zhan's promotion. It has nothing to do with Li Lai Yu. Li Si's expression became somewhat subtle upon hearing this and suddenly pointed at the life loathing blade, saying, Junior fellow, does this knife look familiar? Pei Ling quickly replied, Senior brother, you're mistaken. It's just an ordinary knife. However, Li Si insisted, it's indeed the life-loathing blade. Jin Jin Chan relied on this knife to defeat countless opponents in the outer sect. Zhou Yi directly said, Pei Junior fellow, name your price. I want this knife. Pei Ling smiled apologetically and said, I'm sorry, senior brother Zhou. This knife was given to me by senior brother Zhen. It wouldn't be appropriate to sell it. Unexpectedly, the three of them didn't pay any attention to Jin Jin Chan at all and didn't think highly of Pei Ling. Seeing Pei Ling's ignorance, Zhou Yi immediately threw a punch at him. Pei Ling was sent flying to the wall by the tremendous force of the punch, causing a cloud of dust to rise. When the dust settled, Pei Ling was unharmed. Realizing that today's situation couldn't be resolved peacefully, Pei Ling no longer hesitated. He held the knife handle with both hands and stood in front of him, calmly saying, if you want the knife, let's see if you're capable. Suddenly, Miao Chen formed hand seals and wielded his long sword, while two sword light directly aimed at Pei Ling. Pei Ling couldn't dodge in time and could only resist with the life-loathing blade. Although he easily destroyed the sword energy, the blade of the knife shook violently under the impact. Before Pei Ling could react, Zhou Yi's fist came crashing in. 
Pei Ling swiftly dodged, realizing that they were attacking without holding back. Enraged, Pei Ling fiercely wielded the life-loathing blade in front of him. Just then, Li Si, who had been silently observing, suddenly spoke up. He doesn't know swordsmanship. Knock his life-loathing blade away. He quickly recited an incantation, and two translucent ghosts appeared beside him, swiftly charging towards Pei Ling. Pei Ling, who was new to the martial world, hurriedly used his knife to defend himself. However, to him's surprise, the two ghosts passed through his body directly. Pei Ling felt as if his head had been struck hard by a hammer, causing dizziness, blurred vision, and weakness in her limbs. However, he gathered his spirits and forcefully swung the life-loathing blade to repel the ghosts. Li Si was amazed to see how quickly Pei Ling recovered, wondering how stable his spiritual soul was. Just as Pei Ling was entangled with the ghosts, Zhou Yi took advantage of the situation and rushed forward, delivering a heavy blow to Pei Ling's chest. Pei Ling coughed up a mouthful of blood, and the large knife slipped from his hand. Enraged, Pei Ling endured the pain and exerted all her strength, punching Zhou Yi in the face. With her left hand, he grabbed his collar and threw him onto Li Si, who had come forward to assist. Seeing his two comrades fallen, Miao Chen was furious and warned, Kid, don't get cocky. I'm at the Foundation Establishment Realm, 5th level. As he spoke, two streams of sword light came at Pei Ling. This time, without the protection of the life-loathing blade, Pei Ling instantly spurted two streams of blood from his body upon the impact of the attack. Seeing that the attack was effective, Miao Chen, overjoyed, moved to pick up the life-loathing blade. However, just as his hand was about to grasp the knife, Pei Ling's foot had already stepped on his arm. You think you can touch my knife? Pei Ling sneered. Then, with a knee strike, he sent Miao Chen flying. The three individuals, witnessing how formidable Pei Ling was, simultaneously launched an attack against him. Pei Ling picked up the precious knife and forcefully struck, forcing the three of them back. However, he was already at his limit. Seeing that Pei Ling had resisted his two sword light attacks and still had fighting strength, Miao Chen considered retreat. Taking a deep breath, he angrily shouted, Pei Ling, we won't let you off today. Pei Ling replied coldly, then I'll kill all three of you. His voice was not loud but carried a chilling intent. The three individuals were terrified by Pei Ling's astonishing momentum, their livers and gallbladders nearly shattering. Could it be that they would meet their demise today? However, in the next second, Pei Ling suddenly changed direction and rushed towards the nearby gate with even greater speed, disappearing outside the door in an instant. After about half an hour, panting heavily, Pei Ling stopped in a dense forest. He felt a lingering fear in his heart, realizing that he had almost forgotten the rules of this underworld sect. Killing a fellow member would incur a fine of 10,000 spirit stones. Reflecting on the battle just now, he nearly made a grave mistake due to his lack of swordsmanship. Now, he urgently needed to learn the bloodthirsty demon blade technique given to him by Li Laiyu. He then summoned the system and clicked on the bloodthirsty demon blade technique, selecting the option to cultivate it. However, the system popped up a notification, detecting that the host had injuries and continuing to cultivate the technique would cause irreversible damage. The host needed to first take a vitality restoration pill to recover from the injuries. When the system detected the vitality restoration pill, Pei Ling became anxious. This darn system, is it going to make me steal the big shots elixirs? In the next second, Pei Ling, under the control of the system, reached into his own bosom. Fortunately, it was just a false alarm. It turned out to be the vitality restoration pill given to him by Li Laiyu. After taking the pill, Pei Ling immediately felt a warm flow rising from his dantian. As the system guided his cultivation, this warmth quickly spread throughout his limbs and body. Just as Pei Ling was immersed in the pleasant sensation of cultivation, the system issued another reminder. It detected that the host lacked the essence blood of Foundation Establishment Realm cultivators. The system would provide three Foundation Establishment Realm cultivators free of charge. Pei Ling's eyes widened in surprise. Three Foundation Establishment Realm cultivators? Could it be? Terrified, Pei Ling wanted to cancel the delegation, but the system completely ignored him. The direction it led him towards was exactly where the three individuals had been earlier. The scene switches and the three individuals are in the middle of a concluding meeting. If I were to use the sword talisman my elder brother gave me, Pei Ling would undoubtedly be doomed. This lowly born scum must have some secret to be so formidable. Tomorrow, we will send people to search the entire Huaying Peak and expose his secret. Just then, Pei Ling breaks through the door and enters directly. The three individuals are shocked by the sight. Pei Ling, I didn't expect you to dare to come back, says Li Si. But before he can finish speaking, Pei Ling slashes his throat with a single stroke of his blade. Ignoring the other two, he stabs the life-loathing blade directly into Li Si's body and begins cultivating with his essence blood. How can Zhou Yi and Miao Chen endure such humiliation? Zhou Yi leaps into the air and throws a punch towards Pei Ling. 
Without hesitation, the system issues a prompt, external attack detected. This cultivation session ends here. Please give a 5-star rating if satisfied. Pei Ling, with control over his body, quickly dodges the attack. But now, there is no turning back for either side. Pei Ling's eyes are filled with killing intent as he thrusts his blade forward. And Zhou Yi, whose muscles have gone limp, collapses. Furious, Miao Chen unleashes three consecutive sword energies. Knowing the power of this move, Pei Ling doesn't dare to underestimate it and immediately activates the bloodthirsty demon blade technique, dispersing the sword energies with a single stroke. Seeing this situation, Miao Chen no longer holds back and uses both hands to form seals, exerting all his strength to unleash the power of the sword talisman in his hand. Sensing the immense aura of the talisman, Pei Ling's heart trembles. He forcefully hurls the life-loathing blade, aiming directly at Miao Chen. However, Miao Chen remains calm and a trace of mockery appears on her lips. You're too slow. A surge of spiritual energy gathers in his right arm and rushes towards Pei Ling. In an instant, Pei Ling is in imminent danger. With a loud bang, a cloud of dust rises, and the entire courtyard is shattered by this powerful strike. When the smoke clears, Pei Ling's figure is nowhere to be seen. Miao Chen wipes the blood from the corner of her mouth and says, My elder brother's talisman is truly powerful. That scum must have been obliterated by the attack. Little did he know, at this moment, a voice behind his sends shivers down his spine. Have you underestimated me? The man is instantly terrified and collapses on the ground, pleading, Please don't kill me. My elder brother is an inner disciple. However, Pei Ling shows no hesitation. He decisively delivers a fatal blow with his blade, ending his life. Looking at the scene of devastation before him, Pei Ling sighs and says, Finally, it's over. As he looks at the system prompt popping up again, asking for a good rating, Pei Ling becomes furious. You have the audacity to ask for a good rating? According to the sect rules, killing an outer disciple incurs a penalty of 10,000 to 30,000 spirit stones. These three influential individuals are not ordinary, so I might be fined up to 90,000. However, they surely have valuable items on them, and maybe the fines can be easily covered. Pei Ling turns their bodies upside down and, apart from a few bottles and jars on the table, the most valuable items are three storage pouches with different designs. Unfortunately, they are sealed and cannot be opened due to restrictions. The only things he can take are some worthless pills. Since the people are already dead, he decides to continue cultivating using their essence blood. One-click cultivation, the intelligent timer appears, but then the system detects that he lacks the essence blood of Foundation Establishment Realm Cultivators. The system will grant him two free Foundation Establishment Realm Cultivators. Pei Ling wonders where these two cultivators came from, and suddenly, the life-loathing blade in his hand trembles, followed by two cries of agony nearby. It turns out that the hate-born blade is absorbing the essence blood of Zhou Yi and Miao Chen. Pei Ling can't help but marvel, they were pretending to be dead. The people of the Heavy Mist sect are indeed cunning. The gift of Foundation Establishment Realm Cultivators is complete. The system will continue cultivating for you. Pei Ling, controlled by the system, starts cultivating right at the crime scene. With a casual swing of his blade, the courtyard instantly becomes a mess. With a few leaps, he arrives outside the courtyard, and the wind howls with each strike of his blade. Pei Ling is overjoyed in his heart. The blood slaughter blade technique is indeed powerful. Wu Lu, the ghostly maid who has been watching from the sidelines, is also shocked. She didn't expect this kid to progress so quickly. No wonder he has such a captivating presence. As the system prompt sounds, the blood slaughter blade technique can be considered a great success. It's the first time Pei Ling feels satisfied with the system. Alright, let's reluctantly give it a 3-star rating, he decides. However, as Pei Ling regains his senses, he looks at the 90,000 spirit stones in front of him and hesitates. It's better to grab his things and run. However, before he can get far, Pei Ling stops in his tracks as he gazes at the vast mountains before him. He not only falls into contemplation but also realizes that he doesn't know which way to go. He can't find a way out. Tears in his eyes. He buries his three roommates, hoping to delay the investigators from the disciplinary hall. He has no choice but to seek help from his fellow disciple, Pei Hongyin, who is known for his servile behavior. However, as soon as he pushes open the courtyard door, he witnesses a scene that makes him cringe. Pei Hongyin is passionately kissing a portrait of Sunny Nan. Pei Ling is speechless. Wow, I guess I came at the wrong time, but his own life is more important. He pretends not to have seen the scene and warmly greets Pei Hongyin. However, to his surprise, Pei Hongyin looks terrified and asks him to keep his distance. Sunny Nan would be unhappy if she saw us together. Pei Ling quickly tries to smooth things over, saying, it's my fault for making our sister-in-law angry. Hearing the term sister-in-law, 
Pei Hongyan's face immediately reddens. It strikes a chord with him. Why don't you tell me how to leave the sect? I'll go find some gifts to apologize to our sister-in-law. As soon as these words are spoken, Pei Hongyan is moved to tears, patting Pei Ling on the shoulder while introducing him to the journey. From Huayin Peak to outside the sect, it's not too far. You can't leave on foot in this lifetime. If you want to leave the sect, go rent Ying Corpse Cloud with 10 Spirit Stones. Pei Ling doesn't have spirit stones, so he tries his luck and asks if Pei Hongyan can lend him 10. Pei Hongyan instantly changes his expression. I've already given all my spirit stones to Sunny Nian. I don't have any extra to lend you, but you can go to the miscellaneous tasks department and earn spirit stones by taking on missions, and don't come looking for me in the future. Pei Ling doesn't want to say a word to this bootlicker and turns around, heading straight to the miscellaneous tasks department. He plans to see what tasks are available first, following the example of others. He inserts his nameplate into the slot and looks at the wide array of tasks in front of him. Pei Ling scratches his head as he sees these bizarre tasks. Deliver a letter for one month, rewarded with three low-grade spirit stones. Take care of a spiritual beast for one month, rewarded with spiritual beast feces. Find Ghostface Grass, rewarded with five low-grade spirit stones. Looking at these tasks, Pei Ling is at a loss. With these tasks, he won't be able to gather 90,000 spirit stones in this lifetime, let alone the next. Finally, he spots a task that rewards 800 spirit stones, but it requires a cultivation level of Foundation Establishment Realm 6 or higher. He realizes he won't reach that level in a short time. However, a thought crosses his mind. He doesn't really want these rewards. He can join a team first and sneak away during the mission, thereby leaving this infernal sect. But reality proves that joining a team is not as easy as he thought. The first team requires a cultivation level of Foundation Establishment Realm 6 or higher. The second team looks down on his lower cultivation level. The third team outright states that joining them with his level of cultivation is suicidal. Just when Pei Ling feels hopeless, a delicate hand rests on his shoulder. Junior Marshal Brother, your cultivation level is quite low, but Senior Marshal Sister won't look down on you. Pei Ling is frightened and runs away. Senior Sister, you must look beautiful when you're slim. Please spare me for now. Meanwhile, in a corner of the miscellaneous tasks department, another bootlicker of Sunny Man is reporting. Senior Sister, am I right? That kid is looking for a team. Does he really think he can take on sect missions with his Foundation Establishment Realm 4th level cultivation? Upon hearing this, Sunny Nan smiles and says, If Pei Ling dares to provoke me, I'll give him a helping hand today. The male protagonist who crossed over to a different world before getting familiar with the environment suddenly burdened with a massive debt of 90,000 spirit stones. Now, Chong Ming's sect is completely unbearable. Pei Ling wanted to blend into a certain team and escape from the sect, but due to his low cultivation level, he was despised by everyone. He even caught the attention of a tank commander's sister and almost lost his innocence. Just when Pei Ling was at a loss, the conversation next to him caught his attention because a team was looking for teammates, and they only wanted newcomers at the Foundation Establishment Realm, Levels 3 and 4. Upon hearing Foundation Establishment Realm, Levels 3 and 4, Pei Ling immediately became spirited. Isn't this exactly what he was looking for? Taking a brisk step forward, he greeted, Hello, senior brother. I am Pei Ling, currently at the fourth level of the Foundation Establishment Realm. Sure, but we're about to leave now. Do you need more time to prepare? No, let's go now. Pei Ling thought to himself, I don't want to bring this hellish sect with me even for a second. Little did he know that these were all calculations made by senior brother. Just when Dinosaur Girl was approaching Pei Ling, Sunny Nan found this senior brother, Chen. Pei Ling's talent is comparable to Pei Hong Yin's, making him a suitable blood sacrifice for senior brother. Senior brother Chen hesitated for a moment. Isn't Pei Ling the one brought in by Xin Jinchan? It wouldn't be wise to provoke him. Sunny Nan immediately explained, in Xin Jinchan's eyes, Pei Ling is nothing more than a dog. If he truly values him, would he let him search for a team alone? Upon hearing this, senior brother Chen finally let go of his worries and looked at the cheerful Pei Ling with a sinister smile. Finally, he could refine his soul summoning banner. Then, Pei Ling and the others rushed towards the sect together. Sitting on the Ying Corpse Cloud, Pei Ling felt refreshed and clear-minded. This was much more comfortable than Pei Hongyan's lousy paper boat. Just then, senior brother Chen patted Pei Ling's shoulder. Pei junior brother, let me introduce our teammates to you. I'm Chen Huan, at the sixth level of the Foundation Establishment Realm. This is my disappointing younger sister, Chen Mei, at the fourth level of the Foundation Establishment Realm. These three are Huang Xian, Zhang Zhongqin, and Xiao Tasha all at the fifth level of the Foundation Establishment Realm. Pei Ling quickly clasped his fist in salute. Nice to meet you all. 
I am Pei Ling, at the fourth level of the Foundation Establishment Realm. Chen Huan then explained to Pei Ling, This mission is mainly to accompany my sister, who is at the fourth level of the Foundation Establishment Realm, for training. Pei Ling immediately showed his loyalty. Senior brother Chen, rest assured, I will definitely protect senior sister Chen. In fact, he had already made plans in his heart. This young master doesn't have the time to accompany your sister for training. Once we're out of the sect, I'll find an opportunity to escape. They say the sea is wide for fish to leap, and the sky is high for birds to fly. But why does this scene feel familiar? Pei Ling looked at the distant scenery, casually asking, Senior brother, besides the sect, what other use does this token have? The answer he received was, Once outside the holy sect, this token is the only thing that can prove your identity. It can also be used to seek help from the sect and for positioning in times of danger. Pei Ling was greatly shocked. This useless token actually has a positioning function? I'll have to throw it away when I run away. Pei Ling scratched his head, then asked, if someone owes spirit stones, and decides to discard the token and flee from the holy sect, wouldn't the holy sect suffer losses? Xiao senior sister smiled and explained, impossible, there was a disciple before who owed 100 spirit stones, he immediately took on a mission and escaped, guess what happened? Pei Ling asked cautiously, trembling, what happened? The holy sect directly sent three cultivators who were one realm higher to chase him for a full 20 years. In the end, they slaughtered his entire family that he had established. Pei Ling was scared out of his wits on the spot, chased for a mere 100 spirit stones for 20 years. How can he escape with his 90,000? Originally, he planned to run away, but it seems it won't work. He can only settle down and work to repay the debt. Their mission this time is to hunt down a 6th level awakened beast, with strength equivalent to a cultivator at the foundation establishment realm. 6th level, and Pei Ling's task is to protect Chen Mei. Pei Ling asked eagerly, Senior brother, how many spirit stones can we get from this set? Chen Huan replied, If you perform well, you can get 20 pieces. Pei Ling was speechless in an instant, 20 pieces? But I owe 90,000 spirit stones. Seeing Pei Ling's expression, Chen Huan thought he was shocked by the quantity of 20 pieces. After all, for newly initiated disciples, 20 pieces is not a small amount. He felt a sense of disdain in his heart. Chen Mei added, Although 20 spirit stones are not few, if you have talent in forging tools, alchemy, and talisman making, you can earn even more spirit stones. Your fellow disciple, Pei Hongyin, had exceptional talent. He was almost taken as a direct disciple by instructor Fu Feng. Unfortunately, Sun Inan interfered. Upon hearing this, Pei Ling was pleasantly surprised and quickly asked how Pei Hongyin caught the attention. It turned out that Pei Hongyin had an innate talent for talismans. He drew his first talisman within two years. Upon hearing that it takes two years for innate talent to manifest and the deadline for paying the fine is three months, Pei Ling felt his hopes dwindling. Just then, Zhang Zhongqin, who hadn't spoken all this while, suddenly proposed a sparring session with Pei Ling. Pei Ling also wanted to test the strength of this team, so after apologizing, he squared his shoulders and threw a punch at Zhang Zhongqin. Seeing that his punch was straightforward and not fancy at all, Zhang Zhongqin smiled faintly, stood his ground without avoiding or retreating, and took the blow head on. But in the next second, a tremendous force struck, almost causing he to embarrass himself. He had to quickly step back and dissipate the remaining force, realizing that Pei Ling wasn't someone to be trifled with. The man no longer held back and attacked Pei Ling with full force. Unable to evade, Pei Ling could only withstand it. After a few punches, Pei Ling gradually fell into a disadvantageous position, finally feeling the strength of someone at the fifth level of the Foundation Establishment Realm. Just then, Chen Huan timely intervened to mediate the situation, saying, that's enough for now. Pei Ling quickly bowed and expressed his gratitude, thanking Zhang Zhongqin for his guidance. After some small talk between the two, Huan Xian suddenly asked, Pei Junior brother, you were clearly carrying a knife. Why didn't you use it just now? Pei Ling smiled and explained, it was just a friendly sparring session. Zhang Junior brother didn't use any weapon either, so naturally, I couldn't either. But in his heart, he thought, don't reveal your cards. I don't want to draw attention to the life-loathing blade again. With the sparring session coming to an end, everyone resumed their quiet journey. Chen Huan was secretly delighted as he watched Pei Ling, who appeared defenseless. He thought, this kid's physical body is so strong, he happens to be the last one I need to refine the soul banner. Suppressing his excitement, he made a low promise, saying, maybe we can enter the inner sect based on this. Ta Sha, in return, said, when the time comes, I will gladly assist Chen Senior Brother to the best of my abilities. Meanwhile, Pei Ling, who was kept in the dark, suddenly noticed that everyone seemed unusually happy. Just as he was puzzled, Chen Mei asked with a worried expression, 
Hey Junior brother, you didn't get injured just now, right? Here, take a few chi blood pills. Pei Ling was overjoyed at the opportunity to get something for free, thinking, how can I refuse something I can mooch off? Now the whole team was happy. After a few days of traveling, Pei Ling and the others finally arrived at the destination of their journey, the Screw Mountain City. Due to the busy affairs of the city lord, they were received by the steward of the city lord's mansion. Upon entering the mansion, Pei Ling felt an unusually rich spiritual aura in this place. Chen Mei chuckled and explained, the city lord of this city is a formation cultivator and has set up a simple gathering formation in the city lord's mansion. Chen Huan quickly added, the city lord is a senior in the foundation realm. When you meet him later, you must not be disrespectful. Pei Ling repeatedly nodded and acknowledged, nephew Chen, it has been a long time since we last met. The person who arrived was none other than Duan Mayan, the city lord of Screw Mountain City. He appeared to be in his 40s, dignified in appearance, with a short beard on his chin. In his eyes, there was a shining brilliance, giving off an aura of shrewdness and competence. Everyone quickly stood up and paid their respects. After some pleasantries, Chen Huan explained the two tasks of this journey to Duan Mayan. The first was the flower demon outside the city, and the second was the purple-eyed ferret in Screw Mountain. Unexpectedly, the city lord's expression changed. Nephew, you must have come prepared. Dealing with the flower demon outside the city and the purple-eyed ferret in Screw Mountain shouldn't be a problem. However, recently, a foundation realm human-faced spider has emerged from the depths of Screw Mountain to lay eggs, and it happens to be near the territory of the purple-eyed ferret. Pei Ling and Chen Huan were instantly stunned, but they had different concerns. Chen Huan was worried about his blood sacrifice being delayed, while Pei Ling was concerned that his reward of 20 spirit stones would go down the drain. Seeing Chen Huan and the others hesitating, Duan Mayan thought for a moment and said, however, there's still a chance for you to complete this task. I have already investigated the activity range of this demonic beast. If you are careful and avoid it, you should be able to complete the mission. Chen Huan immediately breathed a sigh of relief and took the beast's trail map, thinking, as long as we avoid the human-faced spider, the blood sacrifice won't be a problem. This time, I must obtain the soul banner. Time quickly passed, and it was late at night. Pei Ling, back in his guest room, secretly calculated that it would be impossible to accumulate the 90,000 spirit stones solely through missions. He wondered if he should sell the life-loathing blade. Just then, a chilling aura slowly seeped into the room. Pei Ling sensed something was wrong and immediately pushed open the door, only to find the courtyard filled with a suffocating smell of corpses, accompanied by eerie echoes. Pei Ling realized the situation was dire and quickly called for his senior brothers. The next moment, a zombie rushed towards Pei Ling. He hastily used his knife to defend himself, his heart filled with astonishment. What was happening? How could the guest courtyard of the city lord's residence become so eerie? Before Pei Ling could react, another zombie attacked him from behind, biting at him. In an instant, Pei Ling's thoughts raced. Could it be her? He urgently shouted. I have mastered the blood-devouring blade technique. Please show yourself, Miss Wu Lu. With the looming threat of the impending fine, Pei Ling had almost forgotten about the 10-day deadline set by Li Lai Yu. As soon as he uttered those words, a faint hum came from the darkness outside the courtyard gate. The surrounding gloom instantly transformed into countless small swimming fishes, dispersing in all directions. At the same time, Pei Ling felt the temperature drop around him, and a soft, icy body pressed against his back. Two pale arms crossed over his shoulders and slowly wrapped around his neck. In a tender voice, she spoke, Child Pei, why did you come here? You made me chase after you all this way, such a hardship. After experiencing half a month of continuous dual cultivation last time, Pei Ling realized a harsh reality, not everyone could enjoy a life of luxury. Pei Ling quickly explained that he was only going out on missions to earn spirit stones. Wu Lu excitedly said, are you talking about the fine for killing Yao Chen and the others? Pei Ling was greatly shocked. Wow, you've been monitoring me, pretending to be indifferent. Miss Wu Lu truly possesses great supernatural powers. You even know about that. Wu Lu paused for a moment, then burst into laughter. So you used them to practice the external devil technique? No wonder you quickly mastered the blood devouring blade technique. But even so, the blood devouring blade technique is an exceptional skill. It can't be mastered in just 10 days. Suddenly, Wu Lu gripped Pei Ling's throat tightly and coldly demanded, So what secrets do you have? Pei Ling felt as if he had fallen into an ice cellar, unable to move a muscle. Wu Lu's fingertip traced across Pei Ling's chest, threatening to cut him open. Pei Ling's heart sank, feeling the impending doom. Were his life about to end here? Suddenly, several chains shot out from nowhere, tightly restraining Wu Lu. Her actions came to an abrupt halt, and her sweet and delicate face twisted. No, master, I was wrong. I won't touch him, she pleaded. Upon hearing Wu Lu's plea for mercy, 
the chains quickly disappeared. Wu Lu, now free, wore a fawning and flattering expression towards Pei Ling Child Pei. You better do something to provoke the master. That way, I can dispose of you at will, she suggested. Pei Ling was speechless. Even the ghosts in this underworld sect were abnormal. Wu Lu then went on to explain the dangers of practicing the external devil technique. Pei Ling paid little attention. After all, he had the system to help him cultivate. What mattered most now was how to acquire 90,000 spirit stones. With anticipation on his face, Pei Ling grabbed Wu Lu's hand. Miss Wu Lu, you must have a method to quickly earn spirit stones, right? It would be great if I could earn enough 90,000 spirit stones. Wu Lu looked at Pei Ling's greedy expression with a speechless look on her face. You want spirit stones? With child Pei's astonishing physique, you can just ask the master directly, or I'll figure it out myself. It's better not to rely on this cursed soft meal. Upon hearing Pei Ling's response, Wu Lu waved her hand dismissively. Then you figure it out on your own. She then threw a blood escape cultivation manual at Pei Ling this is given to you by the master. Master it within 7 days, or die. After Wu Lu left, Pei Ling let out a long sigh. Finally, she's gone. A mere ghost servant was so troublesome. Li Lai you must be terrifying. It seems I have to practice this technique. The next morning, Pei Ling was still worried about how to earn 90,000 spirit stones when he heard a knocking on the door. It turned out to be Chen Mei coming to find him. Junior brother Pei, my elder brother and the others need to prepare something before leaving the city. So today, we'll rest. Do you have any plans? Feeling the softness in his hand, Pei Ling blushed and replied with a smile, Senior sister, I've been traveling for days and feel tired. I plan to rest in the room. Upon hearing that Pei Ling planned to rest in the room, Chen Mei immediately went off happily to find her elder brother. Pei Ling scratched his head. Why is she so happy about me resting in the room? Chen Huan and the others are nowhere to be seen. Something feels off. Anyway, it's better to slip away to the market first and earn some spirit stones. Young sir, I see that you have a unique temperament. You're an extraordinary talent in cultivation. I have an ancestral cultivation technique here. Would you like to take a look? Pei Ling turned around without hesitation, feeling speechless. Seeing the old man becoming even more persistent, Pei Ling immediately took out his Chongming Sep token and said, can you take a look at this? The old man instantly became clever and realized it was the token of a Chongming sect disciple. Sorry for the disturbance. Pei Ling didn't expect that the token of this underworld sect would come in handy sometimes. Suddenly, Pei Ling's expression changed as he unexpectedly spotted Chen Mei and Zhang Zhongqin at the market. Little did he know that the rest of the group was setting up a formation for Pei Ling in the wilderness, led by the formation master Xiao Tasha. After searching, they finally found a place with abundant in energy, perfect for setting up the Soul Devourer Maternal Array subformation. However, they suddenly realized they didn't have enough talismans for the formation. While discussing how to handle the situation, Chen Mei stepped forward and said, why don't Zhang Xixiang and I go back to buy more talisman paper? You can continue setting up the formation here. Huang Xian looked puzzled and asked, why are you here too? Weren't you supposed to keep an eye on Pei Ling? Chen Mei looked proud and replied, don't worry, I applied a thousand mile fragrance on Pei Ling. He won't be able to escape the tracking of the tracking bees. Now back to the present, hiding in the shadows, Pei Ling overheard their discussion about purchasing materials for the formation. He couldn't help but feel confused. Setting up a formation? Is it really necessary to go through all this trouble just to deal with a 6th level foundation establishment realm purple-eyed ferret? At this critical moment, a swindler from the martial world suddenly appeared. Young sir, you have a keen eye. This is a treasure that can conceal the leakage of spiritual energy. I can sell it to you cheap if you want. Startled, Pei Ling grabbed the cloth and ran without turning back. Pei Ling casually threw a bottle of elixir to the old man to offset the debt. This ridiculous move also caught Zhang Zhongqin's attention. I think I just saw Pei Ling a moment ago. Release your tracking beast quickly, he said. Chen Mei didn't hesitate and immediately released the tracking beast to track him. Pei Ling, who had run into a dark alley, thought to himself, I did say I was resting at home. If I'm seen here, it'll be hard to explain. Just as he was about to continue escaping, a questioning voice came from behind. Pei Ling, it's really you. Didn't you say you were resting at home? Pei Ling quickly waved his hand trying to explain that it was all a misunderstanding. However, Zhang Zhongqin didn't care about Pei Ling's explanation and stepped forward, grabbing his shoulder. Misunderstanding? Then tell me, why did you run when you saw me earlier? Could it be that you overheard something you shouldn't have? Pei Ling could only awkwardly explain that he couldn't sleep and decided to go out for a walk, thinking that they might be resting and didn't want to disturb them. Zhang Zhongqin immediately communicated with Chen Mei. This kid is acting suspiciously. Maybe he really overheard something. We can't let him go. However, Chen Mei interjected. No, we can't. 
the soul devourer maternal array will be activated tomorrow. We should bring him back and closely monitor him. With that, she tightly held Pei Ling's arm and with a seductive look, slowly said, You're too reckless. In this unfamiliar place, what if something happens? Pei Ling sighed at how quickly this woman changed her attitude. Zhang Zhongqin also agreed, Chen Mei is right. We're a team, and we should inform each other and provide support wherever we go. Pei Ling could only apologize awkwardly, and Chen Mei, with a coquettish expression, warned him, If you continue like this, I won't pay attention to you next time. Soon after, the two of them escorted Pei Ling, one on each side, back. Pei Ling looked puzzled and asked, Weren't you supposed to buy materials for the array? Why are you taking me back instead? Zhang Zhongqin smirked and replied, Chen Huan and the others will handle the materials. Right now, it's more important to bring you back. As night fell, Pei Ling lay on the bed, feeling increasingly uneasy. Buying the materials for the array should be the priority, yet they were in a hurry to bring him back. Moreover, their behavior on the way back was unusually warm. With these thoughts in mind, Pei Ling developed a dreadful suspicion. Could it be that their true intention is me? Just then, the noise outside awakened Pei Ling. It turned out that Chen Huan and the others, who had gone out to set up the array, had returned. Pei Ling wanted to eavesdrop on their conversation, but Chen Huan noticed him immediately. Pei Ling, get some rest, he said and then asked, what happened? Pei Ling seemed to be on alert, and Zhang Zhongqin revealed the incident of Pei Ling sneaking out during the day. Chen Huan smiled confidently and said, no problem, tonight. We'll take turns keeping an eye on him and not give him a chance to escape. Tomorrow, when we lead him into Xiao Tasha's illusion array, it will be a great success. I know Xiao Tasha's illusion array very well. I spent three days unable to escape from it. When the time comes, as long as we lure this kid into the array, even if he has great abilities, he won't be able to escape. The next morning, Chen Huan brought Pei Ling to a deep forest in Screw Mountain. Seeing himself surrounded by everyone, Pei Ling concluded that he was their target for this trip, but he couldn't understand why. With a bitter smile, he asked, Chen Huan, are we looking for a flower demon? Chen Huan responded indifferently, just follow along. Chen Mei pretended to comfort Pei Ling and said, Pei Ling, don't be anxious, we're almost there. Pei Ling secretly calculated the strength of both sides and realized that he had no chance of winning. Just then, a roar echoed, followed by numerous demonic beasts attacking from all directions. The group immediately entered combat mode. Pei Ling was overjoyed, thinking that this was his chance. However, before he could take a few steps, a beast's head flew past him. Pei Ling turned to look and found that the battle had already ended. Chen Huan stared at Pei Ling with a grim expression and slowly spoke. Pei Ling, you went the wrong way. Pei Ling could only awkwardly explain. It was my first encounter with demonic beasts, and I panicked. I ran in the wrong direction. Inwardly, he couldn't help but criticize how pathetic those beasts were. Chen Mei, seeing that Pei Ling wasn't being honest, directly hugged his arm and said, This won't do. What if we encounter more demonic beasts and get separated? I have to hold on to you tightly from now on. Pei Ling sighed, realizing that the nearby demonic beasts were too weak, leaving no chance for escape. The ghostly woman could save him, but she probably wished for him to die sooner. Just then, Chen Huan and the others suddenly stopped in their tracks and communicated through telepathy. The subarray of the Soul Devourer Maternal Array is just ahead. You lure Pei Ling in, and Xiao Tasha and I will set up the main formation, they said before leaving directly. Pei Ling felt delighted upon seeing this. The two with the highest cultivation were not present, which was a perfect opportunity for him. He casually asked, what are Xiao Tasha and Chen Huan doing? Chen Mei casually said, they're getting ready to deal with the purple-eyed ferret. Let's keep moving forward. After walking for another 15 minutes, Pei Ling suddenly muttered, they should be far away by now. Before Chen Mei could react, Pei Ling suddenly attacked, grabbing Chen Mei by the neck and forcefully throwing her to the ground. Stop acting in front of me, Pei Ling said. This sudden turn of events shocked Huang Xian and Zhang Zhongqin, who were walking ahead. Pei Ling, what do you think you're doing? You little beast. Pei Ling immediately took out the life-loathing blade. What do I think I'm doing? You know it well, he replied, launching a blade light attack that caught them off guard, causing their weapons to shatter. Witnessing the tremendous power of the attack, Wang Xian and Zhang Zhongqin were astonished. That's the life-loathing blade. Are you one of Jin Chan's people? Pei Ling ignored their questioning and charged at them with his blade. Realizing the danger, Wang Xian and Zhang Zhongqin communicated through telepathy, saying, don't hesitate. Lead him into the subarray. Zhang Zhongqin quickly manipulated his fingers, and countless rock walls instantly rose from the ground. Pei Ling's life-loathing blade was extremely sharp, shattering the rock walls in an instant. When the dust settled, there was no one in front of Pei Ling. Suddenly, Wang Xian emerged from behind, holding a talisman in his hand. Pei Ling swiftly turned around and swung his blade, forcing Wang Xian to retreat. However, the talisman was successfully activated. In an instant, 
golden chains appeared around Pei Ling, tightly binding him before he could react. Just as Pei Ling was immobilized, Zhang Zhongqin reappeared and used his fists to forcefully knock Pei Ling away, causing him to fall into a nearby dense forest. When Pei Ling stood up, he couldn't help but sigh, realizing that dealing with two cultivators at the fifth layer of the Foundation Establishment realm was a bit challenging. However, he found it strange that the two didn't pursue him. Regardless, he decided that it was best to keep moving. However, after walking for a while, Pei Ling suddenly discovered that he had returned to the starting point. In front of him was a strange compass. Pei Ling looked at the sinister runes before him and felt even more convinced that it was not suitable to stay there for long. Taking a deep breath, he sprinted in a direction, but no matter which way he ran, he would always end up back in the same place. Oh no, I can't get out of this cursed place, Pei Ling lamented as he slumped on the ground. Suddenly, a bright idea flashed in his mind. System. I want to cultivate the vampire vanishing technique. The intelligent cultivation system promptly responded, the host will lose control of their body during the cultivation period. Please do not panic. Immediately, blood-colored ripples appeared beneath Pei Ling's feet as he began practicing the vampire vanishing technique. The system detected that continued cultivation of the vampire vanishing technique required blood nourishment and offered to provide several high-grade bloodstones free of charge. Pei Ling was secretly delighted. Just as I expected, there's nothing in this cursed place. If I want bloodstones, I'll have to find my way out. However, to his surprise, the system directly led Pei Ling towards a large mountain. Pei Ling was shocked and exclaimed, Big brother, I asked you to help me find a way, not to lead me to my death. Unexpectedly, the anticipated collision did not occur. Pei Ling directly passed through the mountain wall. It turned out to be an illusionary technique. Pei Ling was overjoyed. I finally escaped. System, I commend you for this. I'll give you a 4-star rating this time. At the same time, Chen Huan and Xiao Tasha successfully set up the maternal ray. Upon returning to the original location, they found everyone covered in injuries. Huang Xian wore a grim expression. We've been tricked by that kid. I didn't expect Chen Jinshan to give him the Life Loathing Blade. Life Loathing Blade? It seems that Pei Ling has a close relationship with Chen Jinshan. Zhang Zhongqin couldn't hide his worries and suggested, Chen Senior, it's not wise to provoke Chen Jinshan. What do you think? However, Chen Huan remained calm and composed, rest assured. The dead won't speak. He's trapped in the illusionary array, and there's no way he'll come out alive. In another half an hour, the maternal town will be completed. Today, I will definitely master the soul summoning banner. The scene shifted, and Pei Ling was controlled by the system as he arrived in a gloomy cave. Looking at the dense spider eggs in front of him, Pei Ling was speechless. Is it just a coincidence? Could this be the lair of the human-faced spiders? But the system didn't care and took action, cutting spider eggs directly with a knife and gathering a thick blood aura towards Pei Ling. His figure moved swiftly and agilely within the cave, even faster than before. Then, his body transformed into a thin layer of blood-colored clothing. The vampire vanishing technique was successfully cultivated. At the same time, the system prompted, this cultivation session is complete. Thank you for using the intelligent cultivation system. If satisfied, please give a 5-star rating. Just as Pei Ling was immersed in the joy of mastering the evasion technique, a loud rumbling sound came from behind. A giant spider with glowing red eyes stared at him. The human-faced spider became furious and let out a piercing scream. Fortunately, Pei Ling had just mastered the vampire vanishing technique, which barely allowed him to dodge the attack. It was fortunate that the vampire vanishing technique came from Li Lai Yu and, after being trained by the system, Pei Ling was able to fully activate it, instantly creating distance between him and the human-faced spider. Despite the spider's furious charge and relentless web spitting, it could only seethe with impotent rage, watching Pei Ling's figure turn into a small dot in the distance. However, the human-faced spider continued to chase after him even though Pei Ling had already escaped the cave. Finally, Pei Ling had an idea. While he was running headlong into the canyon, several miles away in a specially cleared area, complex array patterns were drawn with cinnabar and blood, and in the center stood a soul-summoning banner. The banner bore the struggling souls of a dozen individuals, their faces contorted in anguish. Chen Huan's face displayed a smug smile. The soul devourer maternal array is complete. Xiao Tasha. Begin. With Xiao Tasha's command, the Soul Devourer Maternal Array was officially activated. Instantly, thunder roared and a sinister aura enveloped the area. Just as Chen Huan was imagining the completion of his Soul Summoning Banner, the array suddenly stopped functioning. Xiao Tasha panicked. There are no offerings in the subarray. Pei Ling has escaped. The group, already harboring sinister intentions, descended into chaos in an instant. Chen Huan hastily interrupted the argument among the group and decisively commanded, Chen Mei quickly summon the tracking bees and go with Huang Xian and Zhang Zhongqin to chase after Pei Ling. Remember, bring him back alive. 
Seeing Chen Huan's displeased expression, the group dared not delay and followed closely behind the tracking bees. However, after only a short while, the behavior of the tracking bees became peculiar. It seemed like there was a terrifying presence ahead, causing it to hesitate and refuse to fly forward. Huang Xian's expression turned serious. There are no decent monsters in this area. Could it be the human-faced spider? Zhang Zhongqi encountered, impossible. The human-faced spider is in the egg-laying period and wouldn't venture this far to protect its offspring. Just as they argued, a billowing cloud of dust rose not far ahead of them. It turned out to be Pei Ling sprinting towards them without stopping. The few individuals who were worried about not being able to find Pei Ling and report back were overjoyed when they saw him running towards them. However, to their astonishment, Pei Ling passed right through them and, as he left, said, Thanks for taking care of me all this time. I hope you like this gift. The three individuals were shocked by Pei Ling's incredible speed and wondered what kind of evasive technique he had cultivated. But before they could pursue Pei Ling, a loud noise came from behind. It turned out the human-faced spider had caught up to the three of them. The three panicked and ran for their lives. The spider spat out a thread of silk, which entangled Chen Mei, the one with the lowest cultivation. He, she desperately cried for help. Senior brother, save me. Zhang Zhongqin wanted to intervene and save him, but Huang Xian stopped him directly, saying, let's go, we can't save her anymore. They watched helplessly as Chen Shu fell into the mouth of the human-faced spider. Pei Ling heard the distant screams and turned his head to glance back, saying, don't blame me, you brought this upon yourselves. The two fortunate ones who managed to escape found Chen Huan and, seeing their disheveled appearance, Chen Huan sensed that something was amiss. He asked, what happened? Where is my sister? Chen's senior brother, that Pei Ling guy attracted the human-faced spider. We barely escaped by using the blood ignition technique. It's a pity for Chen Junior's sister, they replied, shocking the two of them. Xiao Tasha anxiously said, Chen senior brother, we're no match for the human-faced spider. We should hurry and leave. However, Chen Huan turned to look at the woman and spoke firmly. We can escape, but what about the injured Huang junior brother and Zhang junior brother? He continued, at this point, we can only rely on the soul devourer maternal ray. You two go into the subarray and hide, and when Xiao Tasha and I lead the human-faced spider into the illusion formation, you come out. The two individuals showed concern on their faces and asked. Can the illusion formation trap a foundation establishment realm cultivator like the human-faced spider? Chen Huan's expression turned grave, and he said, After all these years of our friendship, do you think senior brother would harm you? Xiao Tasha wanted to say something, but Chen Huan stopped her. Although the two sensed that something was amiss, they didn't have a better solution at the moment and could only trust Chen Huan. As they watched the two gradually walk away, Chen Huan's expression changed. And he sneered as he said to Xiao Tasha, Once Huang Xian and Zhang Zhongqin enter the formation, we'll immediately activate the array and include them all in the Soul Devourer Maternal Array. The ending for a licking dog is mostly tragic. Just a second ago, she was being affectionately confessed to. The next second, she was transformed into material for the Soul Summoning Banner. Senior brother Chen saw the human-faced spider about to chase after him. Immediately suggested that Zhang Zhongqin and Huang Xian enter the magic array to hide. However, as soon as they enter the magic array, senior brother Chen turned them into the Soul Summoning Banner. The only regret is that, Zhang Zhongqin and Huang Xian were already severely injured before, so the Soul Summoning Banner they became wasn't perfect. Seizing the moment when Xiao Tasha turned around, senior brother Chen used his hand as a knife, directly stabbing through Xiao Tasha's chest. At this moment, Xiao Tasha couldn't understand why she had helped him kill so many people, done so many things. And just moments ago, they had promised to be together forever. With this one turn, she was going to be transformed into the soul summoning banner herself. In contrast, senior brother Chen had an excited expression on his face. My soul summoning banner has finally been successfully completed. Once you enter the soul summoning banner, you can accompany me forever. Surely, you must be delighted in your heart. In this way, I haven't let down my junior sister. I will fulfill my promise and take you out of here. The scene shifts. Pei Ling finally escapes to Screw Mountain City. Pei Ling's spiritual energy is now depleted, and he needs someone's help, and that person is the Lord of Screw Mountain City. Obviously, this time he made the right bet. After receiving the report from his subordinate, the Lord of Screw Mountain City immediately started supplying spiritual energy to Pei Ling. After some recuperation, Pei Ling knelt down directly on both knees. Lord, something bad has happened. That Foundation Realm human-faced spider is coming to kill us. Senior brother Chen had junior sister Xiao set up a magic array in an attempt to refine the human-faced spider into the soul summoning banner. The Lord of Screw Mountain City was shocked in his heart. That's a Foundation Realm demon beast. Even I dare not provoke it. Chen nephew has gone mad. 
Pei Ling quickly added. I don't know what they were thinking. In any case, the plan failed, and everyone scattered and escaped. I was fortunate enough to escape as well. The Lord of Screw Mountain City was cautious as well. After confirming several times that the human-faced spider was indeed heading towards Screw Mountain City, he decided to go and save the people. After all, Screw Mountain City has the array set up by the Holy Sect. Even if he can't defeat it, he can still retreat safely. This made Pei Ling break out in a cold sweat. If he really rescues them, won't he be finished? Pei Ling wanted to persuade him, but the Lord of Screw Mountain City insisted on going to save them. There was no way around it. Pei Ling had to quickly come up with a way to save his own life. Whether the Lord is going to save people or seize treasures, he couldn't leave the Lord's mansion right now. The scene shifts. Senior brother Chen, who is fleeing in a sorry state, is still thinking. When he gets back, he must make Pei Ling's life a living hell. Screw Mountain City is just ahead. If he can use the city's protective array to kill the human-faced spider, maybe he can make a small fortune. After all, the materials from a Foundation Realm Demon Beast are not cheap. Just at this moment, the Lord of Screw Mountain City also arrived. Chen Huan hurriedly sought help from the Lord, hoping the Lord could help kill the human-faced spider. Unexpectedly, the Lord rewarded him with a move called Black Tiger Plucks the Heart, and also took away his soul summoning banner. In just an instant, the Lord completely severed the connection between Senior Brother Chen and the soul summoning banner. Senior Brother Chen wanted to threaten the Lord with the sect rules, but before he could finish speaking, the human-faced spider chased after him. Seeing his life in danger, Senior Brother Chen hurriedly kowtowed to Duan Mayan, begging for mercy. Consider this soul summoning banner as my gift to you. Please, Lord, save my life. I am willing to be a servant, to be driven by the Duan Mu family for generations to come. However, Duan Mayan ignored Chen Huan, and with a hand gesture, he directly treated Chen Huan as a gift, and presented him to the human-faced spider. He said to the spider, our strengths are equal, fighting would only result in mutual damage. Moreover, there's the abyssal demonic formation ahead. Please stop here. Although this young cultivator cannot compensate for your loss, it is still my sincere intention. The Foundation Realm human-faced spider is also cunning. After accepting Chen Huan, it turned and left. Back in Screw Mountain City, Duan Mayan, with a sad face, said to Pei Ling, Friend Pei, I'm really sorry. That human-faced spider is truly fierce. I was ultimately a step too late in going there. Chen Nephew has already been killed by it. I fought desperately, only managing to snatch Chen Nephew's belongings from its mouth. Pei Ling was shocked. So he really went to kill and seize treasures. Pei Ling immediately knelt down on both knees, howling and crying. Senior brother Chen was such a good person, and now he's gone. I don't know how the other senior brothers and senior sisters are doing. Upon seeing this, Duan Mayan quickly pretended to comfort Pei Ling and said, your senior brothers and senior sisters are likely to have encountered unfortunate situations as well. Besides some severed limbs, we found some belongings. You should keep them as a memento. Pei Ling looked at the items on the table with disdain. What a memento. There's not a single valuable thing. At that moment, Duan Mayan unexpectedly took out senior brother Chen's soul summoning banner, a rare top grade spiritual artifact. You should take this as well, he said. Pei Ling was shocked. How can this not be a top grade spiritual artifact? These were refined using the lives of our fellow disciples. I almost ended up in the mix myself. If I take this, will you spare me? Pei Ling hurriedly added, Our group has caused a lot of trouble for Screw Mountain City. I will accept the other belongings. But please let the Lord keep the soul summoning banner. Senior Brother Chen, even in the afterlife, would agree with this decision. Duan Mayan was pleased. This kid actually understands social etiquette. However, I have one question. How did Senior Brother Chen, at the sixth layer of the Foundation Establishment Realm, die at the hands of the human-faced spider, while you managed to escape? Do you possess exceptional abilities? Faced with Duan Mayan's pressing questions, Pei Ling was surprised. It seemed he had to bring up Li Liyu. The reason I came out this time was under Li Liyu's orders. If I can't complete the mission, I won't be allowed back to the section I was able to escape solely due to Wu Lu's secret assistance. However, Li Liyu does not want anyone to act in her name. Upon hearing that it was someone from Li Liyu, Duan Mayan quickly put on a smiley face and reassured Pei Ling, Don't worry, friend Pei. If you don't mention it, and I don't mention it, Li Liyu won't find out. As for your mission, let me handle it. It's easier when there are people within the court. Upon learning that Pei Ling was associated with Li Liyu, Duan Mayan quickly returned with the bodies of the purple-eyed ferret and the flower demon, 
all within the time it takes to burn an incense stick. When Duan Mayan asked Pei Ling to present the sex insignia to complete the mission, Pei Ling was dumbfounded. It turned out that senior brother Chen and the others never intended to assign him a mission. They only wanted to bring him out to be refined into the Soul Summoning Banner. Fortunately, he could submit the necessary procedures at the General Affairs Hall. Now, the biggest problem was that Pei Ling hadn't raised enough funds to pay the penalty for killing three fellow disciples. If you were to return now, he would undoubtedly be warmly greeted by the relatives and friends of those three individuals. However, just as Pei Ling was about to express his desire to stay a few more days, Duan Mayan exerted his authority. It's not that I don't want friend Pei to stay longer, but you are the only one who survived this trip. It's easy for others to accuse you of conspiring to harm your teammates. Besides, friend Pei, you wouldn't want to shoulder the crimes under the name of the Holy Maiden, would you? Return early and report to clear your name. Fortunately, I have evidence from the Hall of Duties to prove your innocence. If you think Duan Mayan did this for Pei Ling's benefit, then you are gravely mistaken. Once Pei Ling safely returns, others will surely think that he employed some means to harm his fellow disciples. Duan Mayan will also be able to clear his own suspicion. After all, the Soul Summoning Banner was a gift from Pei Ling, not something he stole for himself. From another perspective, if Pei Ling is truly associated with Li Lai Yu, then helping him could be considered doing a favor for someone who's riding the wave of success. In this operation, Duan Mayan would benefit no matter how you look at it. Pei Ling let out a deep sigh. Since it was the case, he could only leave Screw Mountain City and find an opportunity to escape. However, what Pei Ling never expected was that this old man had no sense of fairness and directly arranged a Im Corpse Cloud with automatic patrol, leaving him no chance to escape. The scene shifts to elderly Ping's residence at Huayin Peak. Han Su, Li Si's grandmother, is filing a complaint to elderly Ping. Master, Li Si is your own grandson. You must seek revenge for him. Li Ping's eyes glint with fierceness as he asks about the disciples assigned to Li Si's courtyard, only to be informed that they have been taken care of. Li Ping becomes furious. You eliminated such an important witness. Use your brain and think. How could Pei Ling, with his abilities, have killed all three of them simultaneously. The key to this matter doesn't lie with Pei Ling but with the mastermind behind him. Furthermore, Li Si and the others died under a peculiar knife technique. Within the holy sect, the only one who possesses such a mysterious knife technique is Xin Jin Zhan. Xin Jin Zhan also has a conflict with Miao Cheng Yang, who is also an inner sect master. Pei Ling was most likely commanded by Xin Jin Zhan to kill Miao Chen, and Li Si happened to be unfortunate enough to be implicated. Now that Pei Ling has been taken out of the sect by Chen Huan, he is probably already trapped within the Soul Summoning Banner. As for Xin Jin Zhan, since he is distantly related to Li Lai Yu, I have no concrete evidence, and I can't act recklessly. You should pass on this information to the Miao and Zhou families and ask would be Zhou to contain Li Lai Yu. This will allow Miao Qing Yang to deal with Xin Jin Zhan. Without Li Lai Yu as protection, Xin Jin Zhan is no match for Miao Qing Yang. Xin Jin Zhan, who was teaching the female disciples, suddenly gets beaten up by Miao Qing Yang who shows up at the door. The disciples inside the door were about to step forward to help, but they were shouted away by Xin Jin Zhan. As the leader of the prestigious Jian Sang lineage, where should I put my face if I let the disciples help? Facing the furious Miao Qing Yang, Xin Jin Zhan can only evade his anger. After careful inquiry, he realizes that he has indeed killed Miao Chen. Xin Jin Zhan is bewildered. How could I not know about this? He was just about to explain. But Miao Qing Yang launches an attack before Xin Jin Zhan can fully explain. Xin Jin Zhan can only defend himself while attempting to clarify the situation. However, all the evidence points to Xin Jin Zhan, and Miao Qing Yang refuses to believe his explanation. You still won't admit it? Didn't you threaten to seek revenge on me a few days ago? Xin Jin Zhan feels a crack opening within him. Which bastard spread my provocative words? Yes, I did say those words, but I absolutely did not kill Miao Chen. However, consumed by rage, Miao Cheng Yang is set on seeking revenge and pays no heed to Xin Jin Zhan's explanations. He relentlessly attacks Xin Jin Zhan. When Xin Jin Zhan opens his eyes again, Miao Cheng Yang is already gone. I was actually knocked unconscious. Now my face is completely lost. Enraged and feeling powerless, Xin Jin Zhan immediately declares his intention to report to the Elder's Hall. However, his disciples inform him that before leaving, Miao Cheng Yang stated that he would personally go to the Elder's Hall to pay the fine. He also mentioned sparing Xin Jin Zhan's life life this time out of respect for Li Lai Yu. Hearing this, Xin Jin Chan is consumed by anger and wonders who framed him. Meanwhile, Pei Ling, the instigator of this entire incident, is still thinking about how to get Xin Jin Chan's help in dealing with the fine of 90,000 spirit stones. 
Upon returning to the sect, Pei Ling first goes to the administrative hall to fulfill his task. After some maneuvering, Pei Ling successfully obtains 167 low-grade spirit stones. These spirit stones can buy quite a few things at the treasure pavilion. If it weren't for those three, however, just as Pei Ling walked out of the administrative hall, he was taken away by the Elder's Hall personnel. The Elder's Hall is formidable indeed as they recounted the entire process of Pei Ling's aggression with solid evidence. Pei Ling couldn't argue and could only obediently sign and stamp. Fortunately, the Elder's Hall was relatively fair and only fined Pei Ling 74,800 spirit stones. Pei Ling was instantly at a loss for words. Can I really gather this many spirit stones in three months? But in the next moment, the Elder's Hall steward delivered good news to Pei Ling you don't need to worry about the fine. The Miao, Zhou, and Li families want to pay off the fine for you and buy your life. The Elder's Hall has determined that you don't have the ability to repay, so they agreed to their request. Pei Ling was shocked. How can you disregard all principles? Didn't we agree on three months? The Elder's Hall steward sneered. Principles can be changed. The interests of the sect come first. At this critical moment of life and death, Pei Ling had a sudden idea. Wait a minute. I can repay in three months. I can have Jin Jin Chan, the head of the Jin lineage in the inner sect, vouch for me. He was the one who brought me into the outer sect. The elders hall steward pondered for a moment. Although Jin Jin Chan doesn't get along with the Miao family, he is Li Liayue's distant relative. The elders hall will give face in this regard. So he said to Pei Ling, let's go and pay a visit to Jin Jin Chan, the head of the Jin lineage, and see if he is willing to vouch for you. But if there's even a hint of falsehood, you'll face severe consequences. Meanwhile, Jin Jin Chan, who was drowning his sorrows with alcohol, was suddenly interrupted by a knock on the door. It turned out to be representatives from the Elder's Hall coming to visit him. Jin Jin Chan also had a gloomy expression. He suspected that one of his disciples had caused trouble again, but he couldn't show his face in his current state, so he could only pretend to be in seclusion and communicate from a distance. It turned out that they came to him because Pei Ling couldn't produce the fine for killing three people. Upon hearing this, Jin Jin Chan, burning with anger, didn't care about his reputation anymore. He rushed out and grabbed Pei Ling by the throat. So, you're the one who killed Miao Chen. I'm taking the blame for your mess. Jin Jin Chan at that moment wished he could chop Pei Ling into pieces and barbecue him. However, due to his relationship with Li Lai Yu, he couldn't do anything to Pei Ling. He had no choice but to suppress his anger and help Pei Ling sign the contract. Once the Elder's Hall representatives were gone, Pei Ling was overjoyed. My life is saved. But in the next moment, Jin Jin Chan punched him. Fortunately, it was just a warning to scare Pei Ling, like swatting a fly. Pei Ling sensed a hint of killing intent in that punch. Jin Jin Chan, who had already walked back to the courtyard, casually asked about the amount of the fine. After all, he was the guarantor. Upon learning that it was over 74,000 spirit stones, Jin Jin Chan instantly spat out a mouthful of blood. Even as an inner sect lineage head, I can't come up with so many spirit stones. How can an outer sect disciple like you repay it? They're clearly setting me up. If it weren't for Li Liyue's protection, I'd be barbecued by now. What surprised Jin Jin Chan the most was that the three people Pei Ling killed turned out to be two at the fourth level of the Foundation Establishment Realm and two at the fifth level of the Foundation Establishment Realm. To be able to simultaneously kill three cultivators with higher cultivation levels and barely sustain any injuries was truly extraordinary. No wonder Li Lai Yu took an interest in him, but the fact remained that he couldn't come up with over 74,000 spirit stones. He could only inform Pei Ling of the ways to earn spirit stones and let Pei Ling figure out a way to gather some. If he still couldn't repay, Jin Jin Chan would have to fill the hole for him. Pei Ling also hurriedly thanked Jin Jin Chan. After all, he had gained an additional three months of life. Then he happily bounced away, leaving Jin Jin Chan alone in the chaotic wind. It was a similar situation of fighting beyond one's level. Why was it that Pei Ling emerged and scathed while he himself was covered in wounds? The scene changed. A seductive mature woman dressed in revealing attire was wielding a whip, ruthlessly lashing a woman kneeling on the ground. The woman being whipped not only harbored no resentment but also had a face filled with enjoyment. She even made unreasonable requests for more intense punishment because the master said that one must learn to endure pain in order to forge instruments of even greater suffering for the punished. Such a bizarre scene instantly killed Pei Ling's interest in forging instruments. He turned around and arrived at Talisman Mountain. Pei Ling had intended to perform well, but after a series of extravagant and nonsensical movements, 
he could only draw Mario. What surprised Pei Ling even more was that the talisman paper used for crafting was made from human skin. In the first lesson in crafting involved personally selecting a living person on the spot and skinning them to make talisman paper. Naturally, Pei Ling stayed far away from such a bloody scene. Since forging instruments and crafting talismans were not feasible, he decided to take a look at beast taming. Unexpectedly, the beast taming instructor, who had just emphasized the need to fully trust the spirit beasts, had his arm bitten off by a spirit beast the next moment. This frightened Pei Ling, and he fled. This was truly the style of a sinister section. Was there nothing that a normal person could learn? However, there was still one last option, alchemy. If all else failed, he simply wouldn't learn it. He could sell the life-loathing blade and pay the fine. Fortunately, the lecturer at Elixir Mountain seemed relatively normal, which gave Pei Ling a glimmer of hope. Just as Pei Ling was attentively listening to the lecture, the system suddenly popped up with a notification. It detected that someone outside was teaching alchemy, and the system was recording it. Pei Ling felt great joy in his heart. Finally, this dog-like system had done something right. With the completion of the system's recording, Pei Ling could already envision himself reaching the pinnacle of life. With the support of the system, Pei Ling didn't want to waste a single moment. He immediately went to the herb shop of the alchemy instructor at Dan Fong and purchased two sets of alchemy materials. Then, with great excitement, he rented a grade D alchemy room to prepare for alchemy. Pei Ling still had some worries about his situation. However, upon further thought, he realized that with Xin Jin Shan as his guarantor for the incident of killing Miao Chen and the others, there shouldn't be any problems. As for the matter with Chen Huan, Duan Mayan probably had it handled by now. His top priority was to focus on alchemy and earn spiritual stones. With no worries, Pei Ling immediately summoned the system and activated the one-click automated mode. After the system operated for a long half hour, the first batch of tempering bone pills was finally refined. This batch yielded a total of 12 pills, with a color even more pure than the ones he had obtained from Jin Jin Zhan. This filled Pei Ling with hope for the future. Two batches in an hour, and 12 hours a day, without eating or drinking, he could produce 12 batches in three months. That would be a total of 79,920 spiritual stones. As Pei Ling thought of this, he immediately started the next batch of refining. However, things didn't go as planned. Just as he placed the herbs in the alchemy furnace, the furnace exploded. At the moment of Pei Ling's confusion, the system also prompted with a message, insufficient host spiritual power. Alchemy failed. The cultivation session in automated mode ends here. Pei Ling was speechless. If his spiritual power was insufficient, why didn't the system notify him earlier? After all the fuss, he ended up losing 10 spiritual stones. However, the urgent matter at hand was to sell the first batch of pills at the treasure house and get the furnace repaired for them. However, just as Pei Ling arrived at the treasure house, he received some bad news from the conversation of passers-by. The purchasing price for tempering bone pills was only 5 spiritual stones. It was truly a cutthroat business. There was no choice. Even if he had to sell, no matter how little money he would get. However, due to Pei Ling's shabby appearance, the process of selling the medicine was quite depressing. As soon as he entered the treasure house, he was mocked by a parrot. After much difficulty, he reached the room for selling pills, only to be scolded by a beautiful alchemist's lackey. When he presented the pills, he was ridiculed by the store's purchaser. Fortunately, the system was more reliable this time. The tempering bone pills he refined turned out to be high-grade pills. As soon as he opened the medicine bottle, a strong aroma of the pills filled the air. However, the store purchaser still believed that Pei Ling, in his shabby appearance, couldn't possibly produce such good pills. They thought he must have picked them up by lock. Pei Ling was speechless. If I wasn't in need of money, I would show you my real skills. Fortunately, the experienced store owner who purchased the pills had rich experience. The moment he smelled the pill's fragrance, he slapped the store's lackey across the face. Then he pulled the lackey up and apologized to Pei Ling, offering to purchase his tempering bone pills for 40 spiritual stones. Hearing this, Pei Ling felt ecstatic, but in order to sell at a better price, he immediately put on a troubled expression. The genius alchemist Jean Sumian also looked at Pei Ling with admiration in an instant. It should be noted that tempering bone pills had inexpensive materials, and the difficulty of refining high-grade pills was much higher than that of foundation-building pills. This pill must have been created by a master. If she could study it, perhaps her alchemy skills would advance further. Jean Sumian grabbed Pei Ling's hand and placed it on her chest, expressing willingness to pay 50 the spiritual stones for the pills. Furthermore, he would recommend Pei Ling to the senior alchemist of the inner sect, Elder Shen, and introduce him to the sect. 
Just as Pei Ling was about to bow down before Jin Sum Ian, the store owner hurriedly stood between Pei Ling and Jin Sum Ian. First, he threatened Jin Sum Ian not to compete with the treasure house for business. Then he informed Pei Ling that the treasure house was willing to purchase his tempering bone pills for 60 spiritual stones. Moreover, in the future, the treasure house would offer a premium of 20% for Pei Ling's pills. An unwilling Jin Sum Ian was also reminded by Ma to consider what was more important, spiritual stones or prospects. Junior brother Pei, you should think it through. Meanwhile, Pei Ling found himself caught between the choice of receiving 60 spiritual stones and joining a prestigious master. He decisively chose the 60 spiritual stones, leaving Jin Sum Ian speechless in response. On the other hand, the store owner at the treasure house had an excited expression on his face. After all, such a big profit was rare to come by. The store owner, who had adjusted his mindset, quickly reminded him not to mix the high-grade pills with other pills as it could affect their purity. However, the next moment, everyone present was stunned and unbelieving. Paling's 12 tempering bone pills were all high-grade pills. It should be noted that even for a grandmaster alchemist, it would take dozens of attempts to refine a single high-grade tempering bone pill. To produce so many at once, only an extraordinary recluse in the deep mountains could accomplish it. The store owner, who had realized what happened, quickly put aside his airs and asked Pei Ling to help introduce the alchemist. Jean Sum Ian, with a shy expression, took out a bottle of foundation building pills from her chest and handed it to Pei Ling. She also naturally wrapped his arm around her chest, clearly hoping for Pei Ling's assistance in the introduction. However, Pei Ling remained unmoved. Although the soft touch was extremely enjoyable, as a foundation establishment realm cultivator without any backing, if others were to find out that he had refined high-grade pills, according to the style of these sinister sects, he would undoubtedly be captured and forced to become an alchemy machine, enduring daily beatings with a small whip. Thinking of this, Pei Ling quickly explained, how could I know any extraordinary hermit? These pills were bestowed upon me by Jin Jin Chan, the sect's inner sect elder. The store owner was puzzled, saying he hadn't heard that Jin Jin Chan practiced alchemy. Jin Sum Ian, too, half believed Pei Ling's explanation, judging from the touch he felt earlier that Pei Ling's hands didn't seem like those of someone who had been practicing alchemy for years. It's impossible to refine so many high-grade pills, and only an outsider would take such precious pills to sell at the treasure house. And Jin Jin Chan happens to be a distant relative of Li Laiyu. Perhaps it's true that he met a grandmaster through this connection. In that case, let's go visit Jin Jin Chan. With Jin Jin Chan as a scapegoat, Pei Ling finally managed to escape smoothly. After deducting the costs, he earned a total of 620 spiritual stones and an additional bottle of foundation building pills. If I had known that alchemy could be so profitable, why would I bother with missions? However, joy turned to sorrow as Pei Ling was envisioning his future. A chilling aura suddenly enveloped him, and a pink spirit chain appeared out of nowhere, tightly binding Pei Ling. Having experienced a similar incident before, Pei Ling only felt slightly surprised before realizing the situation. But Wu Lu, the young lady, instantly appeared, lightly licking her finger and smiling. Pei Ling, it's been a while, she said. However, in the next moment, her expression turned serious. The deadline of seven days is up. I wonder how your vanishing technique cultivation is going, child Pei. Pei Ling desperately held onto his composure and forced a smile. I have mastered the vampire vanishing technique. Please release your suppression and let me demonstrate. Wu Lu looked incredulous and then pointed to a withered tree in the distance, gesturing for Pei Ling to use the vampire vanishing technique to break off a branch and bring it back. Child Pei, you better not be thinking of fooling around and deceiving me. Otherwise, but before Wu Lu could finish her sentence, Pei Ling had already activated the technique. With a swift movement, he retrieved the branch. Seeing that Pei Ling had actually mastered the vampire vanishing technique within the seven days, Wu Lu was greatly shocked. You actually managed to learn it. Pei Ling scratched his head and said silently, What's wrong? Didn't you say I had to learn it within seven days? Wu Lu, feeling ashamed and angry, instantly disappeared without a trace. Pei Ling, who was confused, wore a face of speechlessness. Is she just leaving like that? At the same time, Wu Lu's figure appeared in Li Liayu's room to report the matter of Pei Ling mastering the technique ahead of schedule. Li Liayu furrowed her brows and asked indifferently, The appointed time hasn't arrived yet. Why did you go there in advance to spy on his progress? Wu Lu dared not conceal the truth and trembled as she spoke. In response to Master, I originally wanted to play a prank on Pei Ling. I took the liberty of changing the half-month cultivation time to seven days. As soon as the words fell, Li Liayu let out a cold snort. Wu Lu instantly started bleeding from her seven orifices, crying out in pain. Li Liyue's gaze turned icy. Get out, don't let this happen again. Wu Lu, completely unscathed, left the room. Jiao and I, who had been waiting outside, let out a sigh of relief and advised, 
Master dislikes it most when we act on our own. Luckily, this time, you weren't harmed. If your soul imprint had been shattered, it would have been disastrous. Wu Lu was listless and dispirited. That brat took advantage of Master so much. Little did I know that Master would. Chiao and I sighed softly and said in a low voice, Master's virgin has been broken, causing her cultivation technique to backfire. Her position as the holy maiden is at stake, forcing her into seclusion, and someone is taking advantage of the situation. Even our hound was beaten. However, Master has always been farsighted and prudent. We shouldn't worry too much. Meanwhile, inside the sect, Li Lai Yu was meditating and cultivating, holding the Six Desires Manual. Could it be that the Six Desires Manual is truly too powerful? No one within the sect could restore it. Unexpectedly, he was able to incorporate the Six Desires Manual into his body and, through dual cultivation, channel its power into my body. Although it shattered my virgin, it greatly increased my cultivation. However, the progress of our dual cultivation in the past half month has been slow, far inferior to the first cultivation. Could it be that it requires his initiative? I'll know when I try again in the future. Thinking of this, Li Liyue's face blushed slightly. At this moment, Li Liyue was probably unable to distinguish whether the strong desire to dual cultivate with Pei Ling stemmed from a craving for power or an emotional release. On the other hand, Pei Ling, who was completely focused on alchemy, had successfully refined five furnaces of pills today. One furnace was destroyed, one furnace was consumed by Pei Ling to replenish spiritual energy, and the remaining three furnaces produced a total of 39 high-grade bone tempering pills. With the improvement brought about by the pills, Pei Ling's cultivation had successfully advanced to the fifth level of the foundation establishment realm. Now the only problem was how to safely sell the pills. Continually relying on Jinjin Chan as a scapegoat might raise suspicions. After much contemplation, Pei Ling finally decided to go and sell the pills in disguise as a woman. However, their disguise was quickly seen through by the old shopkeeper of the treasure house, who even made a teasing remark. Young people these days always like to play around with some tricks. I understand. Embarrassed, Pei Ling had no choice but to hastily leave. Seeing that the disguise wouldn't work, Pei Ling had to seek help from Jinjin Chan. However, before Pei Ling could enter, they heard a commotion from inside. Assessing the situation, Pei Ling quickly hid behind a tree to observe. They heard a loud bang, and a domineering woman stormed out of Jinjin Chan's courtyard, grumbling and cursing at him. Clearly, she was not someone to be trifled with. Soon after, Jin Sum Ian, who was beside her, she comforted her. Just a mere alchemy master, it's better not to see him. Your cousin has already secured the task of obtaining the cold marrow fire for you. Once you refine the cold marrow fire, your alchemy skills will definitely advance further. Watching the two women leave, Pei Ling felt a shock in his heart. Alchemy master, could it be because of me? With this thought in mind, Pei Ling was about to slip away when Jin Jin Chan suddenly appeared and caught him red-handed. Jin Jin Chan, who was already feeling frustrated, became even more infuriated upon seeing Pei Ling. Ever since Pei Ling joined, he had always been beaten up. What do I know about alchemy masters? Getting slapped is one thing. But you even kicked down the door to my courtyard. Observing Pei Ling acting suspiciously, Jin Jin Chan immediately had a bad feeling. He suspected that Pei Ling was involved in the earlier incident. Pei Ling naturally wouldn't admit it, but Jin Jin Chan wasn't easily fooled. He immediately declared that he would confront Pei Ling seeing no way to escape. Pei Ling had no choice but to confess the truth. Upon learning the truth, Jin Jin Chan couldn't bear it any longer. He grabbed Pei Ling and exclaimed, do you think I'm easy to bully? You've deceived me time and time again. Today, I won't let you off without killing you. In a critical moment, Pei Ling urgently called for Wu Lu to come and save him. With Pei Ling's shout, Jin Jin Shan also calmed down. After all, Wu Lu was the ghost attendant of Li Lai Yu. Perhaps all of this was orchestrated by Li Lai Yu herself. Suppressing his anger, Jin Jin Shan wanted to provide a way out for both sides. Immediately, Jin Jin Shan expressed that if Pei Ling could really refine the tempering bone pill, he would let him off the hook. Then he prepared the pill furnace and medicinal materials for Pei Ling to refine the pill on the spot. It is worth mentioning that after Ouyang Shanqing prepared everything, she also cheered Pei Ling on with extreme gentleness. This was the first time since Pei Ling joined that he felt cared for, and for a moment, he couldn't help but be captivated by Ouyang Shanqing's presence. However, this wonderful feeling lasted only a few seconds before Jin Jin Shan brought him back to reality. Pei Ling didn't dare to delay and quickly activated the system to start alchemy. Half an hour later, a batch of high-grade tempering bone pills was successfully refined. While Ouyang Xianqing praised him endlessly, Jin Jin Shan's face was filled with jealousy. Such extraordinary talent in alchemy, it's no wonder Li Lai Yu took notice of him. Since Li Lai Yu valued Pei Ling so much, 
as Jinjin Chan, the lapdog, he naturally couldn't let his goddess down. He immediately expressed that once Pei Ling's cultivation reached the fifth level of the foundation establishment realm, he would grant him a great opportunity. However, the next moment, Jinjin Chan was surprised to discover that Pei Ling was already at the fifth level of the foundation establishment realm. In just a few days since joining, Pei Ling had cultivated to the fifth level of the foundation establishment realm. This unparalleled talent in pill cultivation and terrifying speed of cultivation couldn't be described with just the word genius. Pei Ling, on the other hand, was pondering about what kind of opportunity could be more important than making money, when he learned that it involved going to the Gu Abyss to refine the cold marrow fire. Pei Ling was instantly speechless. The shrew from earlier had mentioned taking the cold marrow fire. Getting beaten by Xin Jinshan was one thing, but he didn't want to make any more enemies. It would be better to quietly focus on alchemy. Seeing Pei Ling's lack of ambition, Xin Jinshan immediately started brainwashing him. However, Pei Ling was not an ordinary person. He was the king of surviving in adversity and how could he be swayed by a few words? There's no other way. Xin Jinshan had to promise Pei Ling that if he could refine the cold marrow fire, he would help Pei Ling pay the fine for killing Miao Chen and the other two. As soon as Pei Ling heard this, he became instantly interested. Seeing Pei Ling agree, Xin Jinshan quickly arranged for three disciples at the Foundation Realm to accompany and protect Pei Ling. Pei Ling was taken aback by such a grand arrangement, knowing that it must be extremely dangerous. Immediately, he thought of using Wu Lu's name to convince Xin Jinshan to go along as well. However, Xin Jinshan appeared hesitant. After all, he was just a branch master of the lower five veins, and there were the middle five veins and upper three veins above him. Taking this opportunity forcibly would require him to make arrangements outside. However, in order to ensure Pei Ling's safety, Xin Jinshan still gave Pei Ling a hundred miles escape talisman for protection. Under Xin Jinshan's arrangement, Pei Ling, along with the three senior disciples, set off to seize the cold marrow fire at the Gu Abyss. However, on the way, Pei Ling was constantly mocked by Fan Ji and Shuang. After all, the situation of the joint mulberry vein itself was not very good, and they were wasting resources to fight for this task, all for an outer disciple. It was inevitable for people to complain. Fortunately, Ouyang Xianqing stood up for Pei Ling, preventing him from feeling too embarrassed. However, the next moment, Ouyang Xianqing grabbed Pei Ling and jumped into a deep abyss. At the same time, upon receiving the news that Pei Ling had entered the Gu Abyss, Miao Qingyang immediately decided to go to the Gu Abyss to kill Pei Ling. After all, if Pei Ling died in the Gu Abyss, not only would the Hall of Attendants be unable to investigate, but the task that Jin Jinshan had worked so hard to obtain would also be in vain. It was truly killing two birds with one stone. The only thing that puzzled Miao Qingyang was that the cold marrow fire had already been reserved by Jin Sumian of the middle five veins. Why did Jin Jinshan forcefully snatch this task? Just then, Jin Jinshan unexpectedly risked being beaten and came to challenge Miao Qingyang. The scene shifted to Pei Ling inside the Guabais, enduring the torment of the sinister aura entering his body. Fortunately, Ouyang Xianqing was there to help him transmit spiritual power in time, which prevented Pei Ling from collapsing midway. Seeing Pei Ling so weak, Fang Ji immediately began mocking him, while Ouyang Xianqing naturally tried to defend him. Shuang quickly stepped in to mediate asking Ouyang Xianqing to save his spiritual power for himself and assuring Pei Ling that he would take care of it. Pei Ling glanced at Shuang, thinking that this guy seemed honest and wouldn't betray him, right? As they were talking, they arrived at the entrance of the dream forest. Shuang casually found a wooden stick and told Pei Ling to hold on to it tightly, advising him to ignore everything they see and just follow him. Pei Ling readily agreed, thinking that this wooden stick was his lifeline. However, as soon as they entered the dream forest, Shuang disappeared. Fortunately, Pei Ling still had the wooden stick in his hand, which relieved him a little. But the next moment, the wooden stick in his hand turned into Li Liyue's little hand. Pei Ling felt suspicious. How could Li Liyue be here? What surprised Pei Ling even more was that Li Liyue immediately tackled him to the ground and began removing their own clothes without any hesitation. Seeing Li Liyue's stunning and naked body, Pei Ling's mind was in turmoil. Any man would find it hard to resist such a seductive scene. No, it's not possible to engage in dual cultivation in front of everyone's eyes. Li Liyu wouldn't be so proactive. It must be an illusion. Just as Li Liyu was about to reach the final step, Pei Ling struggled with all his might and managed to escape from under Li Liyu. However, in the spot where Pei Ling was lying, several vines suddenly appeared inexplicably. Pei Ling was shocked, realizing how close he was to death. With the illusion exposed, the illusionist no longer pretended and directly summoned multiple vines to attack Pei Ling. Pei Ling wouldn't just sit back and wait for death. He immediately used the blood slaughter knife technique to strike at the illusionist with a slash. At the critical moment, Ouyang Xianqing appeared in time, 
pulling Pei Ling out of the illusion. As Pei Ling calmed down, he was instantly covered in cold sweat. It turned out that the slash he made wasn't at the illusionist but at himself. If it weren't for senior sister Shanqing risking her life to catch the life-loathing blade with her bare hands, Pei Ling would have been dismembered. Heroes face the test of beautiful women. Three extraordinary beauties all throw themselves at once. Any man would find it hard to resist such temptation. However, just ten minutes ago, Pei Ling was almost seduced by their beauty. Fortunately, Ouyang Shanqing arrived in time, which allowed Pei Ling to keep his head. Seeing that Pei Ling was unharmed, Ouyang Shanqing comforted him while inquiring about Shui Ying's whereabouts. However, Pei Ling looked embarrassed. I was originally holding Shui Ying's senior brother's staff. But somehow Shui Ying's senior brother suddenly disappeared. And Shui Ying, who was closest to me, didn't come to support either. Could he also be in trouble? Ouyang Shanqing, who learned about the situation, didn't linger too long. He pulled Pei Ling and headed towards the exit. However, the next second, the sight before them frightened them to their core. Countless vines emerged from the dream forest, directly attacking Pei Ling and Ouyang Shanqing. The two could only hurriedly dodge. It's safe to say that Pei Ling's luck was quite unfortunate. The vengeful spirits formed by the resentment of the cultivators who died in the dream forest, have only awakened twice in the past century. Pei Ling encountered them on his first visit, with the exit right in front of their eyes. The vengeful spirits directly blocked the way, followed by numerous vines attacking Pei Ling and Ouyang Shanqing. Pei Ling quickly pulled out the life-loathing blade to defend himself. However, things didn't go as planned. Pei Ling's life-loathing blade couldn't cut through the vines at all. Fortunately, Ouyang Shanqing had strong power and barely managed to withstand them. Just as Pei Ling marveled at Ouyang Shanqing's strength, a small vine pierced through Pei Ling's leg without any sign. In the blink of an eye, three Li Laiyu suddenly appeared in front of Pei Ling, throwing themselves at him. Pei Ling instantly became immersed and unable to extricate himself. Fortunately, Ouyang Shanqing timely reminded him, which pulled Pei Ling back from the illusion. Pei Ling was shocked. That was close. I almost fell into it again. Seeing how persistent the vengeful spirits were, it seemed unlikely that both of them could escape alive. It's a pity that such a good senior sister died. Pei Ling hurriedly asked Ouyang Shanqing to go first, as he had the hundred miles escape talisman from Jinjin Chan, so escaping shouldn't be a problem. However, Ouyang Shanqing was stubborn, and she insisted on helping Pei Ling obtain the cold marrow fire. She was determined to do it. Ouyang Shanqing placed the black coffin she was carrying on the ground, and as the coffin gradually opened, countless black chains burst out instantly, shattering the vengeful spirit's vines in an instant, taking advantage of the vengeful spirit's pain. Ouyang Shanqing pulled Pei Ling and swiftly escaped from the dream forest. The power of the black coffin was not something Ouyang Shanqing could control at the moment. Although they managed to escape, Ouyang Shanqing had lost a considerable amount of vitality. Seeing Ouyang Shanqing coughing up blood, Pei Ling hurriedly approached to inquire. But Ouyang Shanqing said it was nothing serious. However, the matter of opening the black coffin must not be disclosed to anyone. Pei Ling naturally agreed wholeheartedly. Just then, Fang Ji and Shuang also approached, seeing their seemingly calm and insincere consolation. Pei Ling's anger burned within him. He had initially thought Shuang had encountered an accident that forced her to abandon him. Now it's clear, this little brat clearly intends to harm me. Shuang, who appears honest and friendly on the surface, actually has malicious intentions in his heart. During their time in the dream forest, Shuang deliberately abandoned Pei Ling, almost causing him to be lost in the illusion. And now, on the Yin Yang serpent vessel, he is scheming in his mind, thinking about how to quietly make Pei Ling fall. You see, the Yin Yang serpent vessel has only one narrow path where the Yin and Yang energies neutralize each other. If one accidentally falls off, it's undoubtedly a certain death for a cultivator in the foundation establishment realm. Even Fang Ji, who is nearby, has repeatedly hinted to Pei Ling through words that it would be best to give up on obtaining the cold marrow fire. Otherwise, there is a high possibility of falling off the Yin Yang serpent vessel, leaving no trace of their remains. Only Ouyang Shanqing, while doing her best to protect Pei Ling, doesn't forget to warn Fang Ji that if he dares to be perfunctory, she won't be polite. Seeing Ouyang Shanqing getting angry, Fang Ji can only obediently back down. With the precedent set, although Shuang has the intention to push Pei Ling down, he also doesn't dare to act rashly. However, what Shuang never expected, was that Pei Ling would fall down on his own. But before falling, he didn't forget to blame Shuang. This move instantly left Shuang at a loss. Seeing that Ouyang Shanqing was about to get angry, Shuang hurriedly explained to him, saying that he didn't do anything. However, Ouyang Shanqing believed that Shuang pushed Pei Ling down. Just as the two of them argued, Pei Ling used the vampire vanishing technique to fly back up. Such a brilliant vampire vanishing technique. 
left everyone present dumbfounded. Pei Ling didn't waste any time. As soon as he came up, he ran to Ouyang Shanqing and complained, firmly accusing Shuang of pushing him down, and asking Ouyang Shanqing to help him settle the matter. Shuang wanted to explain, but Ouyang Shanqing didn't give him a chance to explain. Instead, she took out the bone blooming flower and was ready to punish Shuang. Fang Ji hurriedly pleaded on behalf of Shuang, but was stopped by Ouyang Shanqing. Shuang, although unwilling, had no choice but to endure. I didn't expect senior sister to trust this kid so much. Ouyang Shanqing directly infused the bone blooming flower into Shuang's body. As a scream rang out, Shuang's body was instantly riddled with wounds from the chains formed by the bone blooming flower's illusion. Fortunately, Shuang has cultivation in the foundation realm, so he can withstand this level of pain. At this moment, Pei Ling had a smug look on his face, thinking you can deceive me, compared to the tricks the system plays on people, you're simply weak. After teaching Shuang a lesson, Pei Ling and the others continued their journey towards the Bone Crane Marsh, and the Cold Marrow Fire was located in the center of the marsh. Seeing the Cold Marrow Fire right in front of them, Pei Ling's eyes lit up with excitement. Seeing Pei Ling's excited expression, Shuang became furious, thinking that the mere Cold Marrow Fire was nothing to be amazed about. He really hasn't seen much in the world. Just then, Ouyang Shanqing instructed Shuang to set up a formation to expel the coldine energy absorbed by the Cold Marrow Fire. With a loud shout, from Shuang, several formation flags swelled in the wind, directly inserted into the Bone Crane Marsh, enclosing the Cold Marrow Fire within. While Shuang was setting up the formation, Ouyang Shanqing reminded Pei Ling that the process of assimilating the fire would be painful, but he must persevere, not to disappoint the efforts of the sect master. Pei Ling agreed and also asked the question whether he should directly swallow the fire or do something else. Upon hearing this, everyone was speechless. After preparing for so long, they didn't expect Pei Ling to not even know the basic fire absorption technique. Fang Ji mocked, if you don't even know the fire absorption technique, we might as well go back home. Ouyang Shanqing was also puzzled. Pei Ling could only awkwardly explain that he was still new to the path of alchemy and hadn't had the chance to learn yet. A helpless expression appeared on Ouyang Shanqing's face just as he was about to give on-site instruction, but Fang Ji interrupted and suggested taking Pei Ling back first. After all, for a cultivator in the foundation establishment realm, it would take at least half a month to learn the fire absorption technique. Seeing Fang Ji's careless attitude, Ouyang Shanqing directly slapped Fang Ji's face. Half a month is half a month. Seeing the situation, Shuang didn't dare to say much, and could only curse silently in his heart. You wretched servant, you're so good to a cultivator in the foundation establishment realm. You're truly obedient to Xin Jinshan's dog, but you don't have much time left. Ouyang Shanqing then began the on-site instruction directly. Once she finished explaining the fire absorption technique verbally, he planned to give Pei Ling a detailed explanation. However, Pei Ling's system had already recorded the fire absorption technique completely. Just as Pei Ling was thinking about how to explain to senior sister that he had already learned the fire absorption technique, Shuang finished setting up the formation. Ouyang Shanqing didn't hesitate and took the core formation flag and compass from Shuang's hand, using the bone blooming flower he had planted earlier to seal Shuang in a cocoon. After all, Shuang had caused trouble several times before, so this was a precautionary measure. It must be said that this senior sister is truly reliable. Ouyang Shanqing activated the formation directly. Under the reinforcement of the formation, the coldine energy absorbed by the cold marrow fire in the bone crane marsh was successfully expelled. After purifying the cold marrow fire, Ouyang Shanqing planned to take Pei Ling to the Yin Mushroom Cave to give Pei Ling enough time to study the fire absorption technique. Fang Ji expressed concern that the journey to the Yin Mushroom Cave was fraught with danger, and it would be difficult for them to protect Pei Ling's safety. However, Ouyang Shanqing remained resolute. I will open the coffin and face the enemy at critical moments. Such a heavy price made the two of them astonished. After all, in the dream forest earlier, Ouyang Shanqing was severely injured after using the black coffin just once. What an incredible senior sister. Pei Ling naturally didn't want senior sister to get hurt again, and immediately expressed his desire to try the fire absorption technique. Seeing Pei Ling acting so recklessly, Ouyang Shanqing, who had taken great care of Pei Ling, naturally tried to dissuade him strongly. However, Pei Ling insisted on going his own way, and directly summoned the system to start absorbing the cold marrow fire. Fang Ji, who had ill intentions from the beginning, instead praised Pei Ling in every possible way. After all, even the most talented genius would not be able to succeed. What awaited Pei Ling was only to be burned to ashes by the backlash of the fire. However, within a second, Fang Ji was harshly slapped in the face. Under the control of the system, Pei Ling's process of absorbing the fire seemed effortless, without even a hint of pain on his face. Little did they know that behind Pei Ling's calm facade, 
he was already in unbearable pain. The taste of burning flames was not easy to endure. He wanted to stop, but the system paid no attention to his suffering. Seeing that Pei Ling was about to successfully absorb the cold marrow fire, Shuang, who was trapped by Ouyang Shanxing, immediately became restless. If Pei Ling succeeded in absorption, wouldn't all his efforts along the way be in vain? And if Pei Ling grew stronger, the Pei family line would naturally rise as well. Then his decision to join Miao Qingyang would become meaningless. For his own future, Shuang didn't care about much else. He directly forced himself to break free from the restraints and kill Pei Ling. However, in the moment he tried to break free, Ouyang Xianqing also sensed Shui Ying's murderous intent, and he immediately moved to stop Shuang. Fortunately, Miao Qingyang arrived in time to save Shuang, knowing that she was no match. Ouyang Xianqing decided to hold on as long as she could, giving Fang Ji the opportunity to take Pei Ling away. Fang Ji agreed verbally, but in his hand, he raised two steel needles and aimed them straight at Pei Ling. Fortunately, Ouyang Xianqing reacted in time, saving Pei Ling from immediate demise. In the highest cultivation level, Miao Qingyang did not rush to make a move. He wanted Pei Ling to experience the feeling of being betrayed and abandoned by everyone first, and then slowly torment him to death, to resolve the hatred in his heart. Fang Ji, with a flattering expression, chimed in, Senior sister, the two of us combined, would still not be a match for the Miao family's head. A wise person knows the current situation and acts accordingly. Why don't we join forces and serve under the Miao family's head? Ouyang Xianqing's heart sank. Although she was a woman, she would never betray her sect, and her principle was as firm as a rock. How could she stoop to the level of collaborating with you? Seeing that Ouyang Xianqing was so ignorant, Miao Qingyang no longer held back and directly launched an attack against Ouyang Xianqing. Ouyang Xianqing quickly brought out the black coffin to defend herself. She released the black iron chains from the black coffin once again, but Miao Qingyang easily evaded them. Ouyang Xianqing discovered that Miao Qingyang was unexpectedly using a similar body technique as Pei Ling. The gap in their realms is not so easily bridged. Just when Ouyang Xianqing was in despair, Miao Qingyang suddenly disappeared into thin air, leaving behind a puzzled Fang Qi and Chuang. Equally perplexed, Miao Qingyang found himself in an illusionary realm, where a woman in a yellow dress was embroidering and calmly spoke, Come and have a seat, Miao family head. With Miao Qingyang taken away by Jiao and I, the situation on the battlefield immediately reversed. Ouyang Xianqing's strength was already above that of Shuang and Fang Ji. The only reason they dared to betray their sect was because they had Miao Qingyang as their backing. Now that Miao Qingyang was nowhere to be found, Ouyang Xianqing naturally wouldn't hold back. She directly opened the black coffin, revealing a young girl in a red dress inside. As the young girl raised her arm, countless bone spikes shot toward them. Fang Ji hurriedly brought out the auspicious pattern treasure furnace to defend, but with their cultivations, I'm afraid they can't hold on for much longer, and can only pray in their hearts for Miao Qingyang to come back quickly. Little did they know, that at this moment, Miao Qingyang had already been pulled into an illusionary realm by Jiao and I. In the illusion, Miao Qingyang looked at the person in front of him, and guessed that this person should be Jiao and I. Under the command of Li Lai Yu, he immediately asked Jiao and I, What is the purpose of bringing me here? Jiao Ni's response was equally direct. Don't touch Pei Ling. Miao Qingyang was shocked. Could it be that Pei Ling's backing is not Jin Jinchan, but Li Lai Yu? But if he doesn't kill Pei Ling, he will never be able to resolve his inner demon. Miao Qingyang, unwilling to accept this, tried to refuse, but found an inexplicable wound on his face. Upon closer inspection, he realized that Jiao and I had stabbed three needles into the handkerchief with Miao Qingyang's image. Miao Qingyang was about to resist, but was struck by an invisible force and sent flying. Jiao and I slowly said, If Pei Ling had failed to absorb the fire just now, I wouldn't have saved him or stopped you. Unfortunately, your luck isn't good. First, you must not reveal what happened today. And second, you must not make a move until Pei Ling enters the inner sect. If you make these two solemn vows, I will let you leave. Miao Qingyang inquired, So you mean I can kill Pei Ling once he enters the inner sect? Jiao and I did not deny it. If Pei Ling dies by your hand then, he is just a worthless individual, who doesn't deserve the attention of the master. Although Miao Qingyang was unwilling, he had no choice but to accept it. He could only let that kid live a few more days. He immediately made the two solemn vows, and just as he was about to leave, Jiao and I stopped him. Now that you're here, drink this cup of tea before you go. The scene shifts. Shuang and Fang Ji, who are still struggling, are on the verge of death. Shuang immediately suggests using Pei Ling as a shield. Without hesitation, Fang Ji releases the glimmering glimworm goo towards Pei Ling. Seeing this, Ouyang Xianqing quickly controls the red-clad girl to stop the glimmering glimworm goo. However, the glimmering glimworm goo easily dodges the attack. This momentary distraction gives Fang Ji an opportunity to launch a surprise attack. When Ouyang Xianqing regains her senses, 
she is sent flying by Fang Ji's punch, which is adorned with three steel needles. Pei Ling, who has finally absorbed the cold marrow fire completely, endures the pain and dodges the glimmering glimworm goose attack. Just as he is about to draw the life-loathing blade for a counterattack, he realizes that the life-loathing blade has dropped from his hand. Upon closer inspection, he sees that his body is covered in burns from the cold marrow fire, rendering him unable to even hold the knife. In this life-or-death moment, Pei Ling has a moment of inspiration, and directly summons the system to cultivate the bloodthirsty blade technique. In an instant, Shuang, who is already severely injured, is slain by Pei Ling under the control of the system, and all of Shui Ying's bloodthirsty aura is absorbed completely. Pei Ling doesn't waste any time. Using another move of the bloodthirsty blade technique, he absorbs all of Fang Ji's bloodthirsty aura. Just then, a hand pats Pei Ling's shoulder, interrupting his system cultivation. This method was also taught by Pei Ling to Ouyang Shenqing. After all, this damn system doesn't discriminate. Who knows what outrageous things it might do, only to see a red-clad girl with bloodshot eyes smirking at him evilly. In the next second, countless bone spikes burst forth instantly. Pei Ling quickly takes out the life-loathing blade to defend himself. Fortunately, he had absorbed the bloodthirsty aura of Shuang and Fang Ji earlier, allowing him to barely withstand the attack. Seeing that the red-clad girl has lost control, suddenly several iron chains shoot out from the black coffin, directly pulling the red-clad girl into the coffin. Pei Ling's heart is filled with mixed emotions. Could it be that it's Wu Lu again? Little did he know that Wu Lu had been punished by Li Laiyu for acting recklessly. Now, Jiao and I has taken over the care of Pei Ling. Pei Ling is overjoyed, thinking of embracing Jiao Ni's favor, but he is kicked away by Jiao and I. The master doesn't like useless people. Before you have demonstrated more value, you should count yourself lucky. Pei Ling is speechless. Undeterred, Pei Ling still wants to ask if Li Laiyu has any new techniques to impart to him, but he discovers that Jiao and I has long since disappeared without a trace. The scene shifts, returning to the courtyard where Pei Ling recounts the process of obtaining the fire to Xin Jinshan. Xin Jinshan is suddenly filled with anger. After all my years of painstaking cultivation, it turns out these are two ungrateful freeloaders. It serves you right to be influenced by the external demonic energy. As for Miao Chengyang being taken away by Jiao and I, it naturally vents Xin Jinshan's frustration. He knows full well Jiao Ni's capabilities, and Miao Chengyang will suffer even if he doesn't die. Seeing this, Pei Ling hastily asks about the repayment of his fine. Unexpectedly, Xin Jinshan shows no sense of martial ethics. He had promised to pay the fine on Pei Ling's behalf if he succeeded in obtaining the fire, but now he resolutely says, Junior brother Pei, you now have cold marrow fire. What is a mere 100,000 fine? Senior brother guarantees that you will be able to repay it. Pei Ling is instantly speechless. Meanwhile, Miao Chengyang not only suffers from serious injuries, but also falls victim to the venom of a poisonous insect. Miao Chengyang, infuriated and embarrassed, immediately ordered his disciples to slaughter all of Pei Ling's relatives, so that Pei Ling could also experience the pain of losing loved ones. At this moment, a disciple stepped forward to advise, this may not be appropriate. If word spreads, others will think that the sect leader can't deal with Pei Ling directly, and can only take it out on his family. If the Zhou family hears about this, the status of our sect might be compromised. Besides, Pei Ling has often been suppressed within the clan in the past, so it might be difficult to disturb his state of mind by targeting his family. Upon hearing this, Miao Chengyang realized the reasoning behind it. The disciple continued, But I have another idea. There is a female cultivator in the outer sect who has some connection to Pei Ling, below the foundation realm. How many people can resist the allure of beauty and pleasure, food, color, and sex? Throughout history, how many people can resist the temptation of beauty? In a courtyard in the outer sect, numerous foundation establishment realm cultivators are surrounding a beautiful woman playing the zither. It is unclear whether they are attracted by the melodious sound of the zither, or by the alluring curves of her well-endowed chest. Cheers continuously erupt from the scene. As the party involved, Sun Inwan, although appearing gentle and virtuous on the surface, is inwardly full of disdain. They are all waste at the third or fourth level of the foundation establishment realm. When will I, with my appearance and talent, be able to attract the attention of true talents? Suddenly, a loud rumbling sound breaks the harmonious atmosphere. The sycophantic followers hastily shield Sun Inwan behind them, acting as protectors of the beauty. Upon seeing the newcomer's foundation realm cultivation, this group of protectors scatters in an instant. Only the senior sycophant, Pei Hongyin, remains undeterred, standing in front of Sun Inwan. However, a sycophant is ultimately just a sycophant. Upon realizing that the newcomer possessed foundation realm cultivation, Sun Inwan forcefully pushed Pei Hongyin aside. 
and immediately threw herself into the arms of this stranger, showing off her coquettishness. Little did she expect that this person had no understanding of tenderness and appreciation. With a single press of the head, he pinned Sun Inlan to the ground. In the outer sect, there are countless people like you, seducing a few wastes, thinking that you have the qualification to climb high branches. Here's a task for you, seduce Pei Ling within half a month, otherwise, die. This sudden turn of events left Pei Hongyan instantly flustered. The scene shifts. Pei Ling, who is in the midst of purchasing alchemy materials, suddenly feels a warm sensation behind him. Before Pei Ling can react, Sun Inlan begins to touch him up and down. Pei Ling hastily pushes her away, and Sun Inlan falls to the ground. She quickly puts on a pitiful look, taking advantage of the situation. Pei Ling is speechless. If he accidentally injures her, he'll have to report himself to the disciplinary hall, which might result in an additional fine. Helpless, Pei Ling steps forward, assists her, and apologizes. Seeing Pei Ling's reaction, Sun Inlan gains confidence instantly. Indeed, all men are the same. She then puts a love pill into her cherry-like mouth, and starts seducing Pei Ling, with her already curvaceous figure. Combined with this innate seductive energy, who could resist being captivated? It's no wonder Pei Hongyan is willing to be a sycophant, but then he has a second thought. Sun Inlan previously hated me to the bone. There must be ulterior motives behind her proactive actions. Could it be a trap? Is she trying to ensnare me? Without wasting a moment, Pei Ling swiftly escapes. Sun Inlan, who is tasked with the mission, cannot easily let Pei Ling go. No matter where Pei Ling hides, Sun Inlan can find him. Unable to bear it any longer, Pei Ling tries to hide in the men's bathhouse to take a bath. But even so, Sun Inlan manages to sneak in. Like a startled bird, Pei Ling hurriedly flees to the Hall of Laws and Regulations. After all, there are restrictions here, and each person has their own designated space. However, to Pei Ling's surprise, he encounters Li Laiyu in this place. A face full of embarrassment, Pei Ling quickly explains that he didn't mean to peek, and Li Laiyu doesn't get angry either, as they have met candidly on multiple occasions before, all of which happened without Pei Ling's knowledge. Upon seeing that Pei Ling managed to break free from her spell, Li Laiyu visibly pauses for a moment, but then she thinks to herself, this is actually better. From the practice session earlier, even if I manipulate Pei Ling in dual cultivation, his cultivation level didn't improve much. Why not take this opportunity to engage in dual cultivation with Pei Ling while he's conscious and see how it turns out? If anything goes wrong, I can just erase Pei Ling's memories afterward. However, Li Liyue's contemplation only adds to the already awkward Pei Ling's stress. The intangible sense of pressure instinctively drives Pei Ling to escape. But as soon as Pei Ling turns around, Li Laiyu calls him to a halt, facing Li Liyue's beckoning gesture. Although Pei Ling strongly resists internally, he doesn't dare to disobey. He can only approach Li Laiyu with a trembling heart. However, these few short steps make Pei Ling feel as if he has traveled thousands of miles. What does Li Laiyu really want from me? Could it be that she discovered my excessive use of her name and has now come to seek retribution? To his surprise, Li Laiyu opens her mouth and asks him to perform the Six Desires secret technique. Pei Ling is instantly bewildered. What is this Six Desires secret technique? Could it be that Jiao and I forgot to teach me the technique back then? At this moment, Pei Ling still doesn't know that the nameless technique is the Six Desires secret technique. With a helpless expression, Pei Ling can only explain that he doesn't know the Six Desires secret technique at all. And through a secret method, Li Laiyu discovers that Pei Ling is not lying. With a puzzled expression on her face, Li Laiyu assumes that Pei Ling has just awakened, and his memories haven't fully recovered yet. But this doesn't pose a problem for Li Laiyu. She directly stands up and grabs Pei Ling's neck. This startles Pei Ling, making him break out in a cold sweat. However, the next second, Li Laiyu kisses him directly. A familiar sensation washes over Pei Ling inexplicably, and spiritual energy surges within his body. Could it be that the nameless technique is the Six Desires secret technique? Should I use the system to automatically cultivate it? No, I can't let go of such a rare opportunity. I've endured enough, it's time for me to show my heroism. Afterward, regardless of everything, Pei Ling embraces Li Laiyu. With the sound of flowing water, they directly begin practicing the Six Desires secret technique in the pool, and at that moment, Li Laiyu finally experiences the pleasure of dual cultivation for the first time. The surge of spiritual energy's impact overwhelms her, making her lose herself in the moment. And with Pei Ling's extraordinary talent, he perseveres for half a month, even in a state of sleeplessness and non-stop cultivation. However, even so, he still fails to satisfy Li Laiyu, because Li Laiyu feels that this half month of practice hasn't brought back the same feeling they had during their first time together. This surprises Pei Ling, as he has displayed all 18 forms of martial arts, yet it still wasn't enough to satisfy her. Li Laiyu, 
after tidying her hair, directly throws her clothes onto Pei Ling's face, and says, you can leave now, she adopts an attitude that suggests she no longer recognizes him once her pants are on, although Pei Ling feels helpless, he can only force a smile, after all, if he continues, he's afraid he'll be completely drained, however, what Pei Ling never expected, was that just as he was about to leave, supporting his waist, Li Lai Yu suddenly wants to erase his memories, naturally, Pei Ling strongly opposes it, I'm almost completely worn out, and you not only show no concern, Concern, but you also want to forcefully erase my memories? How is that fair? However, Li Lai Yu pays no attention to Pei Ling's questioning. When Pei Ling regains consciousness once again, he feels a sharp pain in his waist. Why did I fall asleep? And why does my waist hurt so much again? Wait, why did I say again? I can't figure it out. Pei Ling decides to stop thinking about it. He doesn't even know how long he slept for, but he assumes that Sun Inlan must have already left. The most urgent matter is to leave this sabage. Suddenly, a Yiksha blocks Pei Ling's path, and states that within Hall of All Laws, you cannot leave without making a purchase. Pei Ling is speechless for a moment, but then he thinks, this kind of strong-arm selling tactic, is actually in line with the style of this underworld sect. Consider it spending money to avoid trouble. The only regret is that, the techniques in Zabage can only be viewed after payment. Otherwise, he could have enjoyed the entire Hall of All Laws by himself. Forced into a corner, Pei Ling, settles for a cheap technique to pass the time. Just then, a technique that could plunder the surrounding vitality, to heal oneself or others catches Pei Ling's attention. However, this technique is not convenient to cultivate. If one is not careful, they might inadvertently absorb the plants and creatures within the sect, resulting in hefty fines. Pei Ling even imagines himself being hunted down because he can't afford the penalty. With a helpless expression, Pei Ling has no choice but to shift his focus to other techniques. After searching for a while, Pei Ling finally finds a cheap technique that only costs 800 spirit stones. When he sees that the content of the technique involves manipulation and feigning death, Pei Ling's mind suddenly flashes with some images. Pei Ling feels puzzled. Did I forget something important? As Pei Ling tries to recall, he can't remember anything. With a helpless expression, Pei Ling decides to buy the technique first, and study it slowly later. The most urgent matter is still refining pills to sell and pay the fine. However, what perplexes Pei Ling is, that he only slept for a while, yet the guardian of the tower claims that he stayed inside for half a month, reluctant to accept it. Pei Ling wants to question it, thinking that the guardian might have remembered wrong, but the guardian informs him, there was only one person who entered naked, and came out wearing clothes, and that's you. Pei Ling is instantly speechless. Half a month has passed while he was accumulating the fine. The only thing worth celebrating is, that Sun In Lan, who was bothering him, has disappeared. Confirmed of this, Pei Ling doesn't want to delay for a moment, and rushes back to refine pills. After half a month passes, Pei Ling plans to find Jin Jin Shan, and inquire about the distribution of the pill's earnings. However, he is greeted by a patient wrapped in bandages. Just as Pei Ling was about to ask about the injuries, Xin Jin Shan interrupts him, and informs Pei Ling that he has taken care of the matters regarding the sect. Furthermore, for the 10 top-grade bone tempering pills from the previous time, Pei Ling can exchange one for a medium-grade spirit stone, and one medium-grade spirit stone can be exchanged for 10,000 low-grade spirit stones. Pei Ling is stunned on the spot. He didn't expect that the pills he refined would be so valuable. He immediately hands over the extra 120 top-grade bone tempering pills to Jin Jin Shan for sale. This surprises Jin Jin Shan greatly. These rare top-grade pills, which are hard to come by, Pei Ling was able to refine so many in half a month. Indeed, he has exceptional talent. If that's the case, ordinary markets definitely won't be able to handle it. So the only option is to sell at Wan Hui Si. Wan Hui Si is a place outside the jurisdiction of the Nine Great Sects, a holy land for wandering cultivators to gather and also a lawless place for illicit transactions among various sects. Upon hearing this, Pei Ling immediately loses interest in Wan Hui Si. Just then, Xin Jin Shan suddenly realizes, that Pei Ling's cultivation has already reached the peak of the sixth level of the foundation establishment realm. Such astonishing talent and cultivation, truly frightens Xin Jin Shan. As for Pei Ling, the person involved, he is equally puzzled, as he only refined pills for half a month. How could he progress so rapidly? Seeing this, Jin Jin Shan sincerely arranges things for Pei Ling, and lets him go back to continue refining pills. At the same time, he plans in his mind, to find a way to help Pei Ling obtain a high-grade cultivating jade pill, preferably even acquire the pill formula. After all, such a monstrous talent is rare to come by. 
Back at his residence, Pei Ling sees that the matter of the fine is almost settled, and decides to first improve his cultivation, so he opens the system and begins cultivating the bone tempering technique. However, a prompt from the system instantly gives Pei Ling a bad feeling. The prompt indicates a lack of the breakthrough pill, cultivating jade pill, and the system will gift him a high-grade cultivating jade pill for free. Immediately, the system takes control of Pei Ling's body and dashes out. On the other side, Jean Sumian, who has just finished closed-door cultivation, eagerly shows her sister the high-grade cultivating jade pill she refined. Naturally, her sister praises her. In her excitement, Jean Sumian wanted her sister to take her to Gu Abyss to obtain the cold marrow fire, but her sister informs her that Jin Jin Shan has already taken it. However, Jin Jin Shan compensated them with nine dark cold spring water. Although the nine dark cold spring water is superior to the cold marrow fire in tempering the body and purifying the soul, Jin Sumian is currently focused solely on pill refining, which inevitably leads to some resentment. Her sister can only comfort her by saying that Jin Jin Shan refuses to disclose who he snatched it from, only mentioning that it was ordered by Li Lai Yu and there have been rumors that Li Lai Yu has already emerged from seclusion. I doesn't want to make a big fuss about the matter either. She can teach Jin Jin Shan a lesson on your behalf. Seeing that Jin Sumian's expression hasn't improved, sister can only leave in the name of teaching Jin Jin Shan a lesson. Before leaving, she doesn't forget to remind Jin Sumian to concentrate and focus during cultivation. With dissatisfaction in her heart, Jin Sumian has no choice but to settle for second best and immerse the nine dark cold spring water in the hot spring. Suddenly, a talisman seal appears out of thin air. Alert, Jean Sumian quickly asks who it is. Upon learning that it's her senior sister Lu Qiang, Jean Sumian unabashedly sits on the shore and talks with her senior sister. Lu Qiang informs Jean Sumian that there's news about the Foundation Realm pill formula, but Jean Sumian needs to personally join Zhang Shuo's team and go to Hanshu Mountain Villa for a mission. It is said that the whereabouts of the Crimson Beard Vine can be found there, and Zhang Shuo guarantees that if she can refine two Foundation Realm pills for him, both the Crimson Beard Vine and the Foundation Realm pill formula will be hers. Upon hearing this, Jean Sumian immediately agrees. After seeing off Lu Qiang, Jean Sumian doesn't dare to delay either, and immediately enters the hot spring to prepare for absorbing the nine dark cold spring water. However, absorbing the nine dark cold spring water is not easy. The icy water continuously rushes like a sharp net, as if countless whips are simultaneously lashing her body, and this is just the first step. Even so, Jean Sumian persists through gritted teeth. Suddenly, a figure silently walks in, and without any regard, starts searching through Jean Sumian's clothes left on the shore. Although Jean Sumian notices in time, she is helpless, as she can't move during the tempering process. At this moment, Jean Sumian can only pray that this person doesn't have any inappropriate intentions towards her. Otherwise, her innocence would be compromised. However, what she never expected was that the person not only swallows the high-grade cultivating jade pill she worked so hard to refine, but then walks straight toward Jean Sumian in the hot spring. As the distance between them narrows, both of them simultaneously recognize each other. Although Pei Ling is unwilling in his heart, the system doesn't care about these human affairs. It directly controls Pei Ling, stripping him of his clothes, and then leaping into the air towards Jean Sumian. Pei Ling is greatly alarmed in his heart. This darn system really leaves me no way out. You should know that Jean Sumian's sister is a formidable woman whom even Jin Jin Shan fears, and Jean Sumian in the hot spring is even more shocked and terrified. If the story continues like this, her innocence may not be preserved. Fortunately, the goal of this darn system is quite clear. After jumping in, it doesn't do anything inappropriate, just sitting beside Jean Sumian, swiftly grabbing the nine dark cold spring water. In just a moment, Pei Ling has taken three quarters of the nine dark cold spring water in the hot spring. This greatly angers Jean Sumian. What's even more infuriating is that, after absorbing the nine dark cold spring water, Pei Ling doesn't leave but releases the cold marrow fire in front of Jean Sumian to continue cultivation. Jean Sumian can't bear it any longer, being deprived of opportunities time and time again. Even if it means backlash and risking her life, she must teach him a lesson. Angrily, Jean Sumian stands up and attacks Pei Ling, completely disregarding whether she is clothed or not. However, the next moment, Pei Ling presses her down into the hot spring. Poor Jean Sumian has never suffered such humiliation before. The next morning, Pei Ling's intense cultivation finally comes to an end. Although the process was quite inhumane, the results are not bad. Not only did he break through to the seventh layer of the Foundation Establishment Realm, but his bones have also successfully evolved into the top-grade jade bones. However, the aftermath of this situation is really giving Pei Ling a headache. At this moment, 
Pei Ling can only pray that Jin Sumian doesn't encounter any trouble, otherwise, he would be truly finished. However, when Pei Ling sees Jin Sumian lying aside, his heart instantly sinks. It doesn't look like everything is fine at all. In a panic, Pei Ling has a sudden idea. Since she loves alchemy so much, there must be several healing pills at home. Thus, a scene of one exhibitionist hugging another exhibitionist, rummaging around the house, unfolds. After searching for a while, Pei Ling actually finds a bottle of soul calming pill. The soul calming pill is good at calming the mind and nourishing the soul. The user will sleep continuously for a month, nourishing the soul and cultivating the spirit in their dreams. The situation is critical at the moment, so Pei Ling can only let Jin Sumian take this pill. He can only hope that no one will come looking for her during this month. After she recovers, he can find a way to apologize. Suddenly, a knocking sound is heard at the door. Pei Ling is instantly startled and breaks out in a cold sweat. Indeed, things have manifested so quickly. Reluctantly, Pei Ling has no choice but to open the door. The person at the door is Jin Sumian's senior sister, Lu of Qiang. Pei Ling can only lie and say that Jin Sumian is currently resting and unable to receive guests. Seeing that Lu of Qiang doesn't recognize him, Pei Ling instantly comes up with a plan. In an extremely narcissistic manner, he says. It seems Jin Sumian hasn't told you about our relationship, right? Lu of Qiang, taken aback, naturally doesn't believe it. Jin Sumian, who is usually proud and arrogant, how could she be interested in an insignificant person like Pei Ling, who is only at the seventh layer of the foundation establishment realm? Moreover, she and Jin Sumian are like sisters. How could she not know about such a matter between them? Seeing that Lu of Qiang is not falling for it, Pei Ling immediately suggests that they are about to engage in intimate activities with Jin Sumian in the bedroom. Could it be that the reason Lu of Qiang doesn't want to leave is that she wants to witness it firsthand? Looking at Pei Ling's lecherous expression, Lu of Qiang instantly becomes unsettled. She absolutely won't allow anyone to defile her sister like this. Enraged Lu of Qiang raises her hand, using the Nineen White Bone Claw technique. In his panic, Pei Ling uses the Vampire Vanishing technique to subdue Lu of Qiang. Lu of Qiang is greatly astonished in her heart. I am at the eighth layer of the foundation establishment realm, yet he can suppress me instantly in a higher level battle. Such terrifying talent can indeed meet Jin Sumian's standards. Could it be that everything he said is true? After calming down, Lu of Qiang immediately asks Pei Ling, is Jin Sumian participating in the mission at Hanshir Manor or not? Pei Ling initially wanted to refuse. But after a moment's thought, if he doesn't go, it will inevitably raise suspicion. After much contemplation, Pei Ling can only lie and say that Jin Sumian is currently resting, and he will go in her place to complete the mission. Lu of Qiang, believing it to be true, agrees on a time and leaves in a huff. Pei Ling, on the other hand, wears a worried expression. He had seen this mission at the Miscellaneous Commission a month ago. If no one has taken it all this time, it must be extremely dangerous. To protect his own life, Pei Ling immediately decides to go to Jin Jinchan's small courtyard for reinforcements. However, as soon as he arrives at the courtyard, he is drawn to the puppet wooden figures at the entrance. He hadn't noticed them before, and these puppet wooden figures look like they've just been beaten up. But the most important thing now is to find Jin Jinchan for reinforcements. However, the puppet wooden figure informs him, the patriarch has left the sect and won't return for a while. Undeterred, Pei Ling hurriedly asks, is senior sister Ouyang here, or anyone else? But the puppet wooden figure replies with the same line, the patriarch has left the sect and won't return for a while. Pei Ling immediately retorts, can't you say something else? You and that idiotic system of mind are siblings, right? However, the response he receives is still the same. Pei Ling is suddenly consumed by anger, and he unleashes his frustration on the puppet wooden figure. Just as he returns to Jin Sumian's cave, Lu of Qiang arrives to meet him, leaving Pei Ling with no choice but to accept his fate. What annoys Pei Ling even more is Lu of Qiang's sarcastic inquiry. You finished the task so quickly. Although Pei Ling is unwilling, he dares not say much. On the way, Lu of Qiang is quite curious about the love story between him and Jin Sumian. To avoid revealing any clues, Pei Ling can only lightly praise Jin Sumian, finally managing to shift the conversation to Hanshir Manor. But then Lu of Qiang informs him, among the several groups of cultivators who went to Hanshir Manor for missions, only one person survived. 